Well, thanks, guys, for showing up. And welcome to the session six of When a Star Falls. And our crew has now just gotten to the tower, and they are carrying the star. Now, who is actually in physical control of that that uh, nugget? Like I said, if well, Samos isn't here, we can assume Tyrath would take it off his hands. Right. Yeah, he's the person with the most hit points. <laughs> yeah, he's most trustworthy, too. Now, this Kapuna character is new to the group. She was rescued from the uh, lair of the Darrow. And she was one of the slaves that had kind of kept her sanity somewhat. But you can tell it's affected her and she's still skittish and, and quite cautious and, and untrustworthy. But she, you're all she has at this moment. You, you don't know where she's from even. She's been real quiet. Um, you've only had about uh, two or three days, actually. You've traveled about 45 miles to reach the river. So she were, you were with her for about three days. She said maybe 20 words. Um, she wouldn't let you near her. She wouldn't let you, like, she mm -hmm. was always looking at you real cautiously, just to give you that sort of angle, okay? But she stuck with you guys. She took food when it was offered. Um, she actually went out and posted herself in sort of a guard position at some points. But she was mm -hmm. so emaciated and exhausted. She basically spent those three days ba barely keeping up with you guys and then sleeping solid. You can tell she's been through hell, right? Mm -hmm. And the brief times you talked to her, she voided you and was off sleeping, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, she looks better, though. You guys, I don't know how you want to treat her in the last three days. You guys can now role play a little bit if you wish, um, if you want to ask about her or try to talk to her or something. Yeah, Sprite will keep to herself unless prodded for information. She's the only female, all right? So uh, everyone gives her her space then, I'll assume, and lets her, mm -hmm. and, and gives her food, and, and and then you guys come around the corner, and this uh, this guy says, my name's Hadley, and I am a, a father and a monk. My name, I'm a monk in the order of the night sky. They say that Shelfly, my master, and the greatest of the sages is dead, and that Piars, who is his pupil, is now keeper of the books. But I know this to be untrue. And since you somehow know the password, I will risk all and beg aid. Since I first came to the tower, I have walked by the river each evening and Shelfie has spoken into my mind to instruct me and gain news of the visitors. That evening after my master had been proclaimed dead, I walked once more by the river in memory of him. Then briefly, I felt his thoughts touch mine. They were filled with fear and he placed in my mind only the password and the response which we have just exchanged. Since then, no further messages have come. Piars is evil and has long sought Shalfi's title. He has bent the minds of the lesser sages while my fellow monks, sworn to their individual masters, could do nothing but obey. I fear foul play, for the monks closest to my master have left the tower on a secret mission only the day before his supposed death, leaving him defenseless. Mm -hmm. Whether Shalfi's alive and a prisoner are dead as, as Piars claims, the usurper and his minions must be destroyed. If you will undertake this task, you should pose as travelers seeking answers from the sages. Wait in the mm -hmm. hostile until called to the main island. Then, when you are brought to the hall of questions, burst through the curtain behind which the sages hide and run them to ground. My brother monks will oppose you even until death in honor of their vows, and if need be, you must kill them. Spare only Shalfi who wears the white robe. No more now. And he had immediately brought you down to the jetty. And he seemed in a tense hurry. And he talked to you as he walked down to the jetty, saying this. I wish to stay more time, but I fear for my master's safety. You mm -hmm. must go immediately. It is a good time. It is high noon. You will be easily accepted into the hostel. There is the... The keeper, his name is Auberg. He's a good man. And he knows not much about the tower, but he may help you. I, I remember at this point we found out that, you know, triple XP if we spare the sages and... Yes, on a side note. Just, um, yeah, because he says, kill them if you must. But I personally, I'm going it, to... It's a challenge not to kill somebody <laughs> if they're attacking you. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And plus, you'll save a life, uh, potentially innocent, because these monks apparently just follow orders. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he, he whisks you guys down the jetty, and he goes, and he goes, I know not why you're here, but you must rescue my master. And you didn't mention anything about the star or anything to him, and, and you didn't mention anything about the four monks. Uh, at this point, I'll let you guys carry the conversation if you wish, and as he escorts you into this shallow ferry. Hmm. What weapons or whatever did, did uh, you guys have available for Kabuna? I remember we kind of talked about this briefly. I've definitely got a dagger free she can have. Okay. Um, I know I gave her... Uh... Just looking to see if she had anything written, but I don't really have her completed. I have her character sheet here. But it's I've got everything we got from... I've got everything listed here that we got from the, the Daryl Lair. Gotcha. Bashar, decorated dagger, another dagger, silver, plus one dagger, plus one longsword, plus one shield. Oh, wow. of diminutation. Dimin I'm not even going to try and pronounce potion or shrinking, basically. Oh, yeah, the diminution. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazingly difficult word. Um, okay, I'm just going to quickly post a link to the site here. Mm -hmm. And, and then just to... the, the fallen star. I have this in his small metallic sphere. Right. So she could take the plus one longsword? I know Tyra's not going to use it, are you? What, this, which sword? <laughs> the plus one longsword? No, we got uh, uh, I'm trying to think. That isn't, that's still going to do less damage than my regular bastard sword, isn't it? Yeah, but it's yeah. plus one. Yeah, but my bastard sword's still a better weapon right now. Eventually, I'll look for bastards, a way to make my bastard sword magical. I'm just wondering. Yeah, which, okay, so she's got a, a long sword. I thought we had that conversation about the long sword because I was trying to figure yeah, out if it was actually. We had that conversation yeah. about the long sword. Uh, any armor or anything we had? The plus one shield. Yeah, she's Wait, a fighter. She's a I thief fighter. I took the buckler. She's a, she's a, yeah, you took the buckler. Yeah. yeah. Know, Which meant, but that also meant if she's a fighter, I did have a medium shield there. She yeah, take. but fighter thief. Oh, she's fighter she, thief. The shield will help. So she has a uh, six AC at the moment. Oh, okay, that's fine. I was just letting you know if she wants to try to lower that down by one, she can use the medium shield. Yeah, and I have the and I'm carrying the ring of spell storing for illusionist, which I. Will. Oh right, and I kind of gave you a nice little. Yeah, which I option there. You rolled yeah, for some stuff. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I'm Kapuna. Good. Is opened up a little bit in the last couple of days, and she's now said a few words and said thanks, and and just has followed along, listening in on everything. And Brother Merrick has followed his somber self, and he he's tried to uh, talk to uh, Hadley mm -hmm. a, bit, a couple times, but Hadley's just like just seems to be agitated and concerned about getting you guys over there, and you guys mm -hmm. perhaps before you walk away or something or disagree, right? As well, he's like, please, please. If, um, if possible, uh, during those three days, I will have charged the ring with available spells. Oh, um, so, okay. So, Darren, just to make sure I'm on good terms here, I would have gone ahead and used Cure Lights on myself during the process of the couple of days' journey, and then just right. rested to get the bloody things back. Yes, and now, so you guys can reset your spell books and options and stuff, and clerics can... Yeah. Choose new ones, and you guys kind of have an idea what you're getting into. You're going to be dealing with like a uh, gnome bodyguard, potentially some uh, human monks, sages, mm -hmm. and whatever creatures or traps that might be in this area. And if it comes down to a full on assault or whatever, we'll see how this goes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this could be some delicate situations coming up. So now I, I'll show you the map right now, and it's high. <clears throat> it's like one o'clock in the afternoon, so you guys can see the whole structure. There's a bit of a drizzle starting now. The weather isn't the best, but you can see far enough. You can see the whole thing. It's like wow, impressive. And there's is activity on top on some of the battlements. You can see pendants moving around and stuff as the uh, no mercenaries man their post. Kind of an odd group to run uh, secure the place, but. 
Hey Darren, uh, while you're while you're kind of sentence, I'll be right back. I'm gonna hit the head and throw this trash out, and I'm, I gotta grab something to munch on, make sure I've got enough calories in my system here. Okay. I don't right. like throwing up tonight. No, no. And uh, so, anybody, let's role play a bit then, if you wish. Uh, mm -hmm. Kapuna, yeah, she's lightened up a little bit. Like she was quite traumatized, and she's bit, and she's gotten a bit of flesh on her face, and mm -hmm. and and she doesn't have any much for clothes or anything. She's just you guys gave her a cloak or something, maybe, and uh, you know, Hadley. What could, you know, we could get her. Yeah. QP is hanging around you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But can be invisible at will. I'm just going to post the spells that I have stored on here in chat so you can keep me honest. Nice. So you get your full hit point adjustment now that your twin is out of range. Half oh. Time. So you get plus nine on your hit points. Okay, then. So I have to figure out what I had before. I instead think of the plus, like yeah, instead of plus seven or something you had before or something. Or mm -hmm. uh, so an extra two. Okay. So 23 get, hit points instead yeah, of... Yeah. Yeah, that's nice, though. Boy, you get, that's good. It's a lot of hit yeah. points for a mage. Oh, yeah. So, but you guys need a bit of beef. Like, you don't have a large party. So, but you guys mm -hmm. are pretty high level. You guys are getting up there fifth level. And mm -hmm. so, this module is three to five. Yeah. And uh, I've tightened the screws a little bit on it. Like, there's a couple times. I don't want it to be a walk in the park, but. Uh, yeah. We don't for it to be too easy. No. Um, so you guys are ushered into the ferry, and he uh, paddles that thing expertly, and you can tell it moves with a supernatural grace. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, there's some magic here. And he's got this item. He actually, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's a Qual's Feather Token, mm -hmm. and it's the mm -hmm. anchor one, or the rudder one. I can't remember. It, it propels crafts and stuff magically. And you guys are like heading across, like wow! And before you know it, you come up to this imposing structure, which looks even more impressive as you get close. And he pulls up to the jetty there. I have to shrink you guys a bit. You're too big. Oh, we can't Godzilla. That's no fun. No, each square is ten feet, at least. Let me have a quick look. But I wanted to treat this tower like it was Tokyo. <laughs> I, prefer to, I prefer to treat it like it's Hiroshima. So traditionally you had Tyrath. Kapuna tends to slink around the rear. Like she just, and she's very quiet. You notice she seems to be like an elf. Or I mean, uh, she is a half elf, but she uh, seems to have like thief, thief like characteristics. Mm -hmm. And how does this look? We have Tyrath, and then, uh, by the way, are you guys with me here on the map? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. It's working. I Come am on. now that I'm zoomed in. So, your jetty bumps up to the wharf. And you hear from up on the tower... Uh, just give me one second, I'll get myself... Okay, overlooking the steps which lead up from the jetty on the smaller island is a drab, gray stone building with tall, narrow windows. A uh, gnome wearing armor appears at one of the windows and calls out to you. Oi! Welcome to the Tower of Heavens. Are you here for a, a reading? I would imagine so, yes. So I'm with more tact than I have. Please answer. Yeah, i so who steps forward to talk? Uh, Jeff, just... Jeff, do you do you have more charisma than me? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I have a. What's your charisma? Sixteen no. charisma. Uh, Yay! Higher than my ten. Yeah, higher than my ten. So go. So sp sprite <laughs> with a flourish. <laughs> go ahead, sprite. sprite. You can move your token ahead. Oh yeah, so sprite. Will 
apparently be talking to the gnome and just be like, yes, we are here for a reading. Ah, do you bring gifts? Gold. Yes. Yes, we bring gifts. Of course. Proceed to the stairs. Go up. All right. So we are going up the stairs. Huh? And he gestures around the corner there, and there's a staircase that's rather steep, well made. <laughs> um, there's a, a, part, a portcullis there meant to cut it off. And the staircase goes rather steeply up into the very top part of the island. And most of the island appears to be solid. It only has one floor. Mm -hmm. uh, and that appear and as you get up the stairs, you'll see it levels up onto a landing. <clears throat> and there's a reception area. So I'll move you guys there. Oops. And you guys can move your tokens if you want to, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, imagine Pyrath is perpetually in front of me. Yeah, and you guys can move ahead. Yeah. And you enter this area. It's It seems it's functional. There's a militaristic sort of bent to it, yet it has the uh, appearance of some beauty and whatnot it's an area that has about five or six doors that all mm -hmm. and you see there's a hustle and bustle there's people moving around there's a guy here carrying a tray and he goes to this door and he opens this door and goes through and enters it and he's talking to somebody on the other side of the door uh you see this gentleman come out of this door and he's well dressed like he's clearly probably a nobleman or something and he kind of sniffs and looks over at you guys who have just been through a bit of an adventure, so to speak. You're mm -hmm. a bit bandaged and scuffed up and look pretty rough, frankly. And then the first of you is a half-orc, towering half-orc with a, a gnome skittering around. And he looks at you and sniffs and then quickly scurries back into this room. Um, and you know that this... And then this, this woman comes forward. And he goes, ah! Mm -hmm. And she's eyeballing you kind of cautiously because you're not well-dressed particularly. Uh, Not noble for you. You're you guests can... here to see the sages. Yes. Are you of ah, you're in luck. It has been very, fairly quiet lately. Um, it may not take too long for them to admit you. Hmm. Do you wish to mm -hmm. rent a room and have a meal while you wait? Damn it! Can't grab you. Would we like a meal, my patriots? Well, if it's better than road food, I vote that we partake. Yeah, and for a few gold pieces, you, um, she's basically said, well, it takes uh, one gold piece each and it provides one meal and a accommodation a room. How many? There are oh, six of you. Please. And she six. gestures toward this room over here, which seems to be quite nicely furnished. Um, mm -hmm. It has some cots, a couple cots, a nice table where three people can sit. Uh, rudimentaries, like there's a water vase and some fruit and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she brings you over there. You're not sure. This is probably not this Auburn character. You're not sure. Mm -hmm. And you guys look around. You don't see any gnome warriors down here. This well, no warrior. There's a staircase here, which clearly mm -hmm. goes up into that tower where the gnome was in the window. Mm -hmm. And there's there's a battlement up there. Those staircases, and you have to go up there. It's clear. It's the only way out, and that would lead to the battlement, which guards the catwalk to the keep. And you guys take note of that as you walk by. You're like, oh, okay. Um, so there's another guest in this area. That rich nobleman is obviously a guest coming here to get a, a reading mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, Brother Merrick, he just, he, he politely, he's like, thank you, ma'am. Is, is Auberg around? Oh, he's in the kitchen. He's, uh, 
he's making he's making us lunch. We'll be bringing it out shortly, by the way. Your timing is very good. And Brother Merrick, he nods at you guys and kind of goes, well, let's go to our rooms then, right, guys? And mm -hmm. uh, I'll go. Uh, Kapuna skitters across the floor. And she tends to kind of gravitate surprisingly a bit toward um, uh, Sprite. For some reason, mm -hmm. Sprite. Perhaps because your stature and your charm. Um, I try. Yeah, she seems to. She talks to you. You're the only one who got her to actually speak. <laughs> yeah, uh, you didn't press her, like I said. And if you want, though, but she seems to be kind of following you, and she looks at you. Mm -hmm. And uh, which one room do you want to pick? Just sort of go for one that suits my needs. So, Kyle, we're uh, you. You'll pick a room, I guess. You guys can do other stuff you want. You guys can tap people or, or run upstairs, <laughs> go invisible or whatever, but I'm just playing this out for the uh, moment. Uh, uh, Keep these invisible, actually, by the way, right now, Jeff. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Tyrath's actually going to find a room that feels the most like home. He's He's been on the road entirely too long. Mm -hmm. oh. Speaking of which, Darren, we still got to find out what city he would be from, because he has to be from a, a larger city. <laughs> He could be from Greyhawk. He could be. I mean, that's a logical that's, step, but I'm just um, not sure. We never did settle that exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, if we get this party rolling again in the next module and whatnot, which I'd like, uh, I would, I'm keen on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, well, I also didn't expect to be playing him for over six months, so let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, and well done, everybody. Yeah, like you said, it's one, it's been a good haul, and we've run these, some of these characters from level one. So. I mean, if and that's grueling in one E. <laughs> and I'm is. generous. <laughs> and it's like, well, well, not just that. I'm playing a multi-class character. So yeah, it's even Good better for that. Yeah. So QP yeah. flies. You can see QP when she's invisible. Yep. Mm -hmm. And she'll fly into this room, zip around, and perches there. And so that's she claimed mm -hmm. that one apparently. Okay. Well, then I will take the room that she claims because might as well. Because she doesn't need a lot of space. Yeah, and you guys all breathe a sigh of relief as you see the amenities of civilization. There's like these. This place is well uh, decked out. There's there. Yeah, there's a fruit platter. There's a tanker to fresh water, and you guys are stinky and grimy, and and a bit bloodstained. Um. Uh, Kapuna, so Sprite's uh, Kapuna's falling Sprite, which uh, actually the rooms are filling up. There's I'm only like Brother Merrick and Tyrath are together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's going to be comfortable. Mm, you got a couple. You got the, <laughs> the disciplined monk and the, uh, the rather crazy uh, orc. Smelly half orc. I mean, so, Sprite tends to be very um, Spartan with how he lives. One of the bare essentials. Yeah. He does dress dapper, doesn't he? Mm. <laughs> does he have an Ashcock? He puts on, Ashcock. He puts on a front. He puts on a front for people. I, de I demand an Ascot for uh, Tyrath. I think that'd be hilarious. Put an Ascot on the half work. Uh, yes. A Scullion maid comes carrying mm -hmm. buckets of hot water and comes into the rooms and starts filling up uh, wash basins. And another scullion maid joins. Like there's two come bustling out, then they look they look similar. They must be sisters or something. And mm -hmm. they're carrying hot buckets of soapy water. Yeah. And, oh, and you guys, I am, I am taking full advantage of hot water. Ah, uh, yeah. You're and like I said, everybody's. This is the first time we've been able to let down our guard. Well, I don't know if you want to let down your guard. I'm guessing there's probably basins of water in the room to do some level of cleaning. Yeah, and these girls are bringing in hot water. As uh, Tyrath cleans himself, he kind of scrubs himself, and it does absolutely no good to make him look any better. <laughs> but it's just like having hot water available is just like yeah. just a godsend. Yeah, he feels good about himself, but poor brother Merrick is not getting away from the smell and definitely not getting away from the look. 
Well, he's gotten a bit used to, like, we've been together for a while now, so he kind of he shakes his head every time. I'm close to you. Well, I'm getting used to it, my friend. And he hits you on the shoulder with his fist and clang. He's like, ah. This right here is why I need a mama, ba- mama bag, because he wouldn't care. That's <laughs> true. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's not Auburn. Sorry. Yeah, Auburn. I'm going to uh, clean up as well, because, well, elf. But yeah. Um, you guys hear the clang of, of no warriors coming down the stairs, by the way. Tunk, 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 tunk. And you see there's two no warriors come around the corner and they're fairly well well armored in uh scale, this kind of gnome scale armor, and they got shields and, and and picks and stuff. And they go up to and they talk to the woman. And she's, she goes to the door and knocks discreetly at this door and the nobleman comes out and is escorted up the stairs and heads, and heads off, apparently, to his <laughs> reading or whatever. And that seems to be how it works. The gnomes come mm-hmm. and get whoever's been summoned or whoever's turn it is. And the food comes out. You guys ordered food, right? Yep. Okay, here comes offering. This- yeah, here comes this rotund, uh, sort of like a bartender-looking guy. He's very large-looking fellow coming mm-hmm. out with a huge platter. And he says, hi, so I hear we have a half-orc. It's rare we see your kind, but I hear you have quite an appetite. So he brings out this huge haunch of ham. And uh, bang, puts it down on the table. I, I know you want it. And he seems incredibly <laughs> jovial. Yeah. As he sets that down, Tyrath is going to take his left arm, wrap it around the plate, and he's going to look like a prisoner eating. <laughs> enjoy this like it's your last meal. Anyone, anyone that's dumb enough to reach in on this hawk of ham he has gets stabbed with a fork. It cost you a finger. Or hand. <laughs> exactly. And I don't care, friend man. or foe. He's just back. Hi, look at that, Gwendla. Look at that. And you see one of the girls with the hot water is just in the corner, just shaking. <laughs> look at it. She was quite scared to begin with. And she scoots out as quick as she can. And he laughs. Get more water, lass. <laughs> Doing what Tyrat does best. Mm-hmm. Kapuna is in with uh, Sprite. You're in Sprite. this room. Yeah. And you guys are taking your turn cleaning up and you're left alone for a while and you're left to feast and Ogberg comes back with another platter for the other room and puts it down and you guys have the first home-cooked meal you've had in, in a while. And it's very mm-hmm. good. He's very good host. So, what brings you to the tower? That's a stupid question, I suppose. Eh? Seeing the sages. Uh, they're smart, but he says, I must tell you, though, there has been tragedy in the tower. And you can tell he has a black armband on. Mm-hmm. What kind of tragedy? There's a new master. The old master died recently. In fact, not long mm. ago, about uh, oh, less than a week. Mm. Master Shalfi. Mm. Takes his head. Damn shame. <laughs> he was a good man. He would come down here often and get a meal with us. But... Uh, can't, can't say I recognize the name. Mm. Well, it's a shame. I don't know this 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 new guy. He won't come. He's never been down here. If you ask me, he's a bit of a bit of a jerk. But uh, I imagine um, <laughs> staff doesn't hold him in high regard. If um, if. Sprite is not going to stop him from doing so, or nobody will stop him. I'm going to casually start to mention the the uh, star. Ooh, I'm just going to kind of spill it out. I have the dude. I have the tact of a rusty axe. So oh, okay, make a charisma check. <laughs> I mean, you, you could just casually mention any. You know anything about the fallen star? I crit fail it, Aaron, on a twenty. You crit failed. I roll. I need it under a ten, and I roll a twenty. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, you, you just doubled your number. Yes, actually, in the first edition, if you roll a mat twenty, it doesn't matter what your number is, you fail. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's he's dumbfounded. He goes, uh, hmm. No, I don't. I don't recall such a thing. Uh, let's start. You say. Do you have it with you? Okay, so guys, I, so you, you <laughs> failed, and you say yes. I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna start reaching for. It. Is anyone gonna try to stop this? I'm going to try and stop you. <laughs> okay, this might be funny to watch. Only this. brother Merrick's there at the time. He's in the room with him. Okay, it's awesome. so brother Merrick goes, "No, no, no, stop, please." Uh, yeah, we're just like, yeah. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> remember. And he turns to, please close the door. Close the door. Bring the others here quickly. Please, please. And Brother Merrick comes around the corner of the door and he goes, quick, quick, come here. And he, you guys all pile into this his room and he, he's closed the door in this tavern auberg. He's like, he goes, what is going on? This is strange. Uh, and Brother Merrick is like, look, we think Shelfie lives. We do not believe that he's dead. And this tavern's eyes widen. What? What do you mean? It's been proclaimed from the tower. Piars has assumed his position. Head sage. Mind you, I've not seen a body yet, or it has been very strange. Tyrath is just going to kind of roll his eyes and butt out an orc grunt that all but says you are entirely too naive and gullible. Hmm. So it goes, I don't... So I don't know what you guys... I'm going to let you play it. I'm not going to play Brother Merrick here. Um, hmm. But Brother Merrick says, I, we've, we have reason to believe Shelfie lives and he needs our help. Yes, that is true. He may live. I'm... And what we know this new sage in charge. He has not gone. He has not undergone any rituals that are customary. He's, he's not done what? As far as we know, he didn't go, undergo any rituals that were customary with the monks. Everything has been business as usual. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, there was not much. Not much has happened. Uh, there's been no funeral yet. I'm assuming that they are going to do something soon. They announced uh, Shelfie's death about three days ago. Hmm. But they will be coming soon for you. They will. They think you are guests, right? Yes. Hmm. We are guests. Okay. I'll, I don't know how I can help you, but I will help you if I can. Um. The, the gnomes, they are loyal and follow the orders of Shelfie normally, but now PRs may be able to control them, but uh, that might be questionable. The monks, however, they are ruthlessly loyal. They will follow whatever orders are issued from the, sh- from the sages. It's Once not you... possible to get in front of the PR. Mm. But your, your turn is coming soon. They will come and get you. I will... Do what I can to help, but uh, I rarely go to the main keep. And I wish you well in this. And I can give you something. And he, he calls to one of the girls and sends her off. And she comes back mm-hmm. with a potion of healing. Who wants the potion of healing? So anybody wants to take it? Do you want to roll three sided for the for the potion of healing? Good. Is anybody speaking up? I I don't need it. I've got spells. I've got five spells a day for it. But um, I'll let you. Uh, well, yeah. technically, I have five spells per day, and I use four of them for healing and one of them for blast. But whatever. So, yeah. do you guys want to do anything? Um, now he says, "Okay, well, I will go back to business, and I will keep this secret. And I, mm-hmm. I hope Shelfie lives, and I hope you can help him. And mm-hmm. I will watch your back and do what and I can." And then as, he... um, 
Go ahead. Is it Darren? Go ahead. Finish up your statement. I was gonna say. Yeah, he's done. He goes. Away. He goes away unless you guys. As he's as he's talking about keeping our secrets, Tyrat's gonna pull out his hand axe and a whetstone, mm-hmm. and sit there sharpening his hand axe. <laughs> Give little right. little emphasis. Exactly. Before he, leave, before he leaves, I'm gonna ask him if there's any way we can get in front of the PRs. Any way to get PRs? If there's any way to, to get in front of him, in f- like a, to do like an audience with him. Yeah. Oh, um, he goes. Uh, I do not know how that works. He goes. I'm not sure if they share the responsibility or it's. I don't. I do not know. But you will be taken across the catwalk. Mm-hmm. There, you will be ushered into a, the scene room, mm-hmm. and you will be. I don't know what happens then on. I have never been able to afford it. And he looks at you guys a little bit with your, your well, you look a little better. You spent, you know, a half hour. Actually, there's still a bit more time. You're still cleaning. By the mm-hmm. way, it does wonder. It's for Kapuna. She looks much better, of course. And everybody mm-hmm. does, for that matter. And even QP washes up like a bird in the bath. Okay, so you guys hang out, eat, restore, mm-hmm. chat a bit. He he's he's a bit. You can tell the innkeeper guy. He's a bit. He's pretty good and good at keeping secrets. Hopefully, mm-hmm. but right. eventually you'll hear the sound of uh, gnomes coming for your summons. Mm-hmm. Okay, and lo and behold, that happens. Anything either of you want to suggest the illusionists take care of? No, oh, I'm actually Ty- Tyrath is. He, I'm going to argue in like a private conversation among just us. Well, mm-hmm. after he leaves, that we need to stop with this coy approach and just start kicking in doors. Uh, sometimes the direct approach is the right approach. Sometimes the direct approach leads closer to death. Mm-hmm. I found a good spell to be a bit, bit better. Yeah, you know, well, getting us indoors, <laughs> and that's how half works roll. Yes, it is. And sure Subtlety enough, is not my strong suit. I kind of hopped you guys up here. I doubled you up, by the way. So just bear with mm-hmm. me. Um, these two gnomes come down, chunk, 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 down the stairs, and they're probably about four and a half feet tall, and pretty heavily armored, though. They have like crossbows slung on their shoulders uh, and stuff. Please. Hang on, pause a second, Darren. Who's got the car or whatever going through the background? Because I just totally didn't hear what you just said. Yeah, I heard that too. Uh, you, oh, yeah, it's all good now. Um, these two gnomes come down, and one of them seems to be more of an officer, one in authority. <laughs> and he goes, so you come for the reading? The uh, sages are ready. And these guys are more on the uh, tolerant all around the spectrum in terms of gnome height. Uh, they're pretty short, but not as short as some Sprite. Sprite's actually very short. He's like two, well, just over two feet tall, right? The gnomes are probably four feet tall to f- four and a half. Oh, God. I just realized Tyrath is almost four times as tall <laughs> as Sprite. Oh, geez. You tower. You have to... No, no I'm sorry. He's three and, almost three and a half. He's six foot five. Yeah, two foot and six inches. Oh my god, I'm four feet Ouch. taller than him. <laughs> okay, you can Sprite can command a room better than Tyra. This, this is true, but... <laughs> okay, so far so good. They escort you guys up that staircase, and you guys enter this uh, fortified area. You can see that they have this overhanging barricade where there's a squadron of gnomes. You can count at least five, six of them in there. Some of them armed with crossbows and some with shields and, and picks and such. And then, but the uh, the two gnomes just go this way and they gesture to this, they open this large fortified door and there's this elaborate catwalk that goes probably so like 120 feet above the river and it goes across to these majestic double doors that are open at the moment across. Yeah, I know what a fastball special is. I'm just asking, would the rules allow it? Yes, I'm sure it will. 
What does what damage does a gnome do when launched? Uh, does it know what you launch it from? Yeah. Okay, that, guys, uh, I'm I'm pushing things along here. Okay, because so well, I'm been, okay with it. I mean, quiet. Ser- yeah, that's serious, man. We could totally, completely get along with a fastball special. I want to okay. know what damage Sprite does. <laughs> you guys are escorted by these right. two gnomes, and the one is more official officer type. And he enters the uh, re- a reception area, and it's a military-like looking area. And there's probably, how many gnomes in here? Close to 10 or 12, 15 gnomes in here, heavily armored. Mm-hmm. And they sort of have, they're, they're in stations. They're supposed to be kind of officially by the doorways and stuff in a more mm-hmm. formal manner than they are at the moment. But anyway, you're ushered into it, and he goes, please, wait here a moment in this room and you're just left to stand there in the room and then he goes to these double doors right here opens them up and you can hear some music coming from those doors and it's kind of this weird oriental sort of sound twang 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 mm-hmm. and give me one moment i have to orientate myself Okay, but the, the um, uh, one moment. I'm just going to organize my screens ah, here a minute. Hey, uh, now I'm all black. <laughs> okay, now I can see. Uh oh. There's like 100 gnomes. Oh, Lord. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, the garrison is significant. I regret it. This is varying heights from like two feet to four feet tall, so. Now this area right here, this fine room is no furniture. It's stone flagged floor and the handles of the brass paneled doors are very worn as if centuries of use. There's a bunch of gnomes around and chain mail and shields and they got short swords and their short bows uh, slung and whatnot. They look fairly competent. There's a closed door up here. They go through the double doors into that other room, excuse me. And then he comes back momentarily and he's, he gestures, this way, please. And he's going to bring you into that room. Now, you guys, I don't, you don't really have a choice at the moment. He seems to say, come this way. You guys can resist if you want or do whatever you want or cast spells or do anything at this moment. But I think at this point, I'll follow. Okay. I'll follow suit. So you guys enter the scene room. Now there's some gnomes that follow you in and take positions up on either side of the doorway, like thus. And they're actually smaller than that. Actually, you guys are too small, aren't you? We might be. I was going to ask you a second ago why we looked so small. Why that These guy... are 10-foot square rooms, so oh, that's, wow. that's closer. By the way, that's going to throw me off, because this will be the first time in a long time we've had a fight indoors. Yeah, that's true. And you guys are eyeballing the place up, and you realize, oh, the jigs up this is this is happening um you were led into a shadowy somber room lit by the dancing flames of four braziers dusty red car- curtains line the walls you can see them these dusty red curtains and the ceiling is blackened and the marble floor has seen been worn by soles of countless feet mm-hmm. so the guards usher into the room i i'm just reading here real quickly do we do we actually want to buy the fortune? How much money did you guys got? How much does it cost? I, I blew my load on my armor. Sorry. How much does it cost us? Because I've got a thousand three hundred, a thousand and thirty-three. Gold. Now you see a chap wearing purple, and he looks very important. He's covered with strange tattoos uh, mm-hmm. that run down his arm, and these intricate arcane patterns, and they go on his face. They look. He looks like Ian. Oh. <laughs> and one of the colors of the order is purple, and I just chose that I'm because just, he. At this point, I'm wears, just picturing Ian with his hat and a purple robe, and his facial tattoos and stuff. This is. I know. It's, it just looks like him. Um. So the the guards usher into the room and they discreetly line up against the wall. 
And so right away, like you guys are assessing the tactical situation to see, okay, uh, so these four guys go there. Mm -hmm. And then actually they keep coming in. There's 12 of the fuckers. You see that there are two monks that are at, a ten at attention near the guy in purple. And everyone seems quite formal. They're all dressed in these elaborate robes and there's incense burning and mm -hmm. uh, candles and a, a, a chandelier and whatnot. And he strides forward, this guy in purple. Welcome to the Tower of Heavens. I am Master Lurg. And you... I come here to see the future," he says in an imposing voice, like he's well practiced. Mm -hmm. Like this is rehearsed speech that he gives to everybody. Sort of wrote, yeah. So this Lurg, I can you can, mm -hmm. see, can you see his name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that, but so you um, bring the gift. How much gold do we have to put up? Ah, what is your question? And he looks very formal and he kind of half bows. I, just, I, look, I look to the other two, like, you got something Now in that mind? sets off some alarm bells when he asks, what is your question? You remember the, the term, you guys remember the term Hald Hadley used? Yeah, we. Uh, I don't remember exactly what he said, uh, like offhand, but my mm -hmm. character would definitely remember it. Yeah, but you have yeah. no, you have no clue how much I want to say as just a lark. What is the weight of an unladen swallow? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So okay, let's play this, guys. He's he, he's very we, formal. What we is your question? And he throws some stuff on a brazier, and sparkles go up. It's supposed to impress you and whatnot. You guys have been seen too much to fall for that, but you guys are playing the game. So who's your who's your mouthpiece here? Sprite? Right. Hey, well, we can actually yeah. ask that. If, if you want, we can actually ask that. What is the weight what is the wind speed velocity of an animated swallow? So Sprite, you stride forward? And I would imagine so. I've got the highest charisma. Okay, is that gonna be is that your question? Now, the alarm bell that went off was Hadley mentioned about the Hall of Questioning, Hall of Questions. Yeah. But anyway. Do so you ask, ask him what is the... Okay, go do ahead. Want, ask him the question. Do we want, he looks yeah. at you. Kyle, do we want to roll with that? The no. With God, no. We want okay. to actually answer the question. Okay. If possible. All right. Um... Now, I just put you guys in the room as you kind of came in. So if you want to move around at any point, <laughs> now you can see that QP is uh, near the ceiling. Shall we go with the classic unanswerable question? What happens when a uh, immovable force meets an, uns uh, an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Hey, let's stay in character, though. This is d, &D land. So I don't know how much we know about astrophysics, um, trigonometry, and not as much as I would like anymore. I'll be frank. What is the deepest philosophical question that a D and D know would know? <laughs> Are you sure you want to know that answer? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck, chuck wood? wood? Okay, yeah. guys, come on now. Afraid <laughs> everything seems quite serious in here. Mm -hmm. I find it kind of disturbing that both of us hit it at, at the same exact moment. So Lurg is kind of looking around a little bit. Do you not have a question for the sages? We do not know what the woodchuck is. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. The gnomes are shuffling a little bit, but this is one of the things with like normally people terms... come here ready to ask a question. So they're like, "What would Sprite one had one prepared?" Would... But when you got 
it was one of those things where you had one prepared and then when you got put on the spot, it was like, oh God. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'll one... give you a minute, guys. I, I, I mean, but pick it up a notch, you guys. Come on. What would one do with a fallen star? I'll be right back. Oh, that would work. That's perfect. That's actually not a bad idea. I, as much as we're kind of chuckling around about wow. it. Yeah, so let's pick it up a notch, guys. Yeah, that's a good yeah, call. We'll but, 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 I'll be right but, back, Darren. But, but, I got to go yeah. to the... Yeah. Okay, let's take a short break. I, I heard it. That's a great call. What you were saying, what to... What would one do with a fallen star? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. All right, I'll be back in two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're too smart for our own good. We're too... We're too chuckle happy. No, we're just too smart for our own good. I promise. We'll see. What these wallpapers look like, actually. Hmm. I just realized I have Soul Reaper 2 wallpapers. Yeah. I've got a classic D D map. I can't remember which. Or I'm trying to think. Let's see. You're what, 22, 23, Nest, or something like that? Something like that. I forget. Soul Reaver 2 came out when you were like three or four. All I know is I played Legacy of Kane when I was like seven. Yeah. <laughs> the second one was amazing. Yeah. I'm sitting here going through my GOG listings because <laughs> I didn't realize I owned a game in my GOG listings that apparently I own. Mm -hmm. I like GOG. If we ever do get the chance, a festival special might be attempted. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's a great idea. It's just, it's just first edition rules for throwing another person I don't think exist. I mean, I, I, I that's ironic because I had a group with fifth and fifth edition do a fastball special. Where it was a Goliath. And I, I, I think we need to do the peasant rail cannon. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to give everybody a, like a chance here to kind of say if they want to do anything while they're in this room, like, or if they're just lined up behind Sprite and letting him talk away, which is fine. Um, mm -hmm. Brother Merrick has been eyeballing the guards. Discreetly. I imagine, I imagine we all sort of agreed on a signal when we want shit to hit the fan. And I jumped the gun a little bit, I realized, too. Like, I meant for you guys to have a bit of a, a planning session while you waited. That's okay. I mean, Back in your room. But, I mean, so I'll give you the benefit of doubt if you guys have to want, if you guys want to come up with a plan, because that might be important. I put you on the spot here. Mm -hmm. uh, you're in a room in a very dangerous predicament. There are 10 mm -hmm. gnome guards, mm -hmm. two monks, a sage. The monks are actually... Mm -hmm. Scares me the most. Yeah, monks just suck. In terms of like they, they look pretty competent. Like, and Brother just, Merrick spoke of them and uh, with respect, right? Yeah. Well, the, their ability to kick my teeth in scares me. Monks are scary mm -hmm. in first edition. Yeah, they are. I hate I hate monks in first edition. They're just too good. And I I I did research on them again just to. They have a small chance of killing you instantly. Every time they yeah. hit you. Right, I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot about that rule. Yeah. It's very slight, but it's it's there. It's the like chance of instant death. Yeah, every time. Off. They smack you. Okay, so think about it for a second. Now you guys have realized you're now in in the thick of it. This oh, oh shit. Um now it's Hadley it, we can get information. Hadley said, yeah, once you're brought to the Hall of Questions, he said, if you can burst through there, you can bypass the main defensive area. Because mm -hmm. apparently down here, where you guys can't see, is the actual garrison area mm -hmm. of the tower. And there are many more gnomes down there. Yeah. The place could hold 60, 70 gnomes easily. Oh, great. 70 gnomes, a fighter. Yeah, so I mean, if you go head to head in this place, you could end up in big trouble. That's why I'm like, we should probably go along as much as we can. 
No, I'm most vulnerable. So, so you had, uh, how are you going to phrase your question? Because now they're kind of, he's looking at you with one eyebrow's a bit raised. Because like mm -hmm. I said, they're used to people coming here just saying, okay, which horse should I bet on Saturday? You know, and, or whatever. And like, What would one do if they had a fallen star? Oh, and now I was going to make a roll for him. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, he, you see a puzzled look come on his face. Ah, and then, and then you see this blank sort of what you would call a political sort of bureaucratic look as he a assumes that formal position again. Ah, mm -hmm. what to do with a fallen star? And you can tell now. You make a uh, intelligence check. All right. And as well, Tanriel, you can make one as well. As well. All right, that was a two. Okay, you can tell at the moment, you can tell he didn't connect it. It didn't. Jeff rolled a one. <laughs> um, um, I made it, just so you know. Ah, <laughs> you, you, you actually, no, that's a crit save. So, Tanriel, you can tell mm -hmm. that he didn't take the bait because. Right away, you can tell that he just didn't clue in. So like he, okay. he heard the question, but he didn't put two and two together. He's taking it seriously, like it's your question. But it, okay. yeah, he doesn't. He whether he's not in the know or what is another factor. But this is Lurg. <laughs> he is one of the four who was a supposedly, and he's a supporter of the new order, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So he takes it seriously, and he mods at you, "What to do with the fallen star?" Ah. That is a wise question. And you both can tell he's just sort of mouth uh, mouth service. And mm -hmm. but he's pretty good at it. He is, he's convincing and he's he does it a lot. So that will be just a donative, if you will. Three thousand gold pieces. <laughs> Sorry, how much? Uh, three thousand gold pieces. It is the customary rate. And he looks quite serious. I'm like, but, uh, I look to my sorcerer friend, like, do you have 2,000 other gold on you? Like, I give them that look of, like, I got, like, a third of that. Can you help me out here, man? And he's looking at you guys now a bit more oh, keenly. What do you guys do? I'm like, I'm missing 1,000. Say again? I'm sorry. Yeah, I think he broke up. I'm just looking at the social friend. Like, do you have two thousand other gold to? <laughs> you guys, yeah, you knew it was going to be expensive, but that is a ton of money. Uh, this place is very lucrative, and he's serious. He's like, "Oh, I'm, I'm dead serious. This is not. Please, you must pay the sum, or we will ask you to leave." The sages are very busy now. We have recently had the passing of our the master of our order. We have heard Shelfie did pass. Well, there was no record of his body. Okay, hold on. Do you tell him that? To buy himself time as he looks at his social from can you put up 2,000 other gold? I can't. That, you guys have enough you cash? Have, I've got 1,000 on me. I didn't have that much to begin with, so. You guys have gotten treasure, but I'm not sure if you've gotten that much. I know we have some platinum, too. Yeah. So he goes, yes, we take different currencies, of course. And there's a greedy glint in his eye as he sees you pulling out your gold. Imagine we sort of like huddle and it's like, Trying going through our various purses, like how much you got. But the gnomes now are are being pretty serious. They're a bit like things aren't going as normal or smooth as they're used to. It's it seems things have been a bit awkward. 
And the monks Imagine. themselves have kind of pulled back a little bit and they're eyeballing you guys. You, you've I've kind of raised their suspicions a bit about this. You guys seem confused and and not ready. And this is this is one of those moments where it's like three guys figure out how they're gonna split the bill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sprite's like one minute, one minute. <laughs> okay. Yeah, chime in anytime, anybody. Um, anyone have money? I don't have that much. I don't even know really how much I had because I gotcha. was kind of started. I haven't had a chance to really buy anything since. Roger. All right, let me see. And it's been a while since we've played to you guys, so I'm kind of putting you on the spot. But um, like yeah. I said, I was I jumped the gun when I was going to give you time to plan in your rooms. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, that is my current currencies. Okay, so we'll say that the, the innkeeper told you that it's very expensive. And you were like, how much? And he says, thousands of gold pieces. And so you would have been sort of warned that it would have required a significant sum. I've got a thousand on me. I've got it. Would, would they expect, accept a very decorated dagger as well? <laughs> Probably not. They'll take all currencies. Um, and for some reason, I've all the character sheets are gone. I'm going to have to restart roll 20. Right. Interesting. So he goes, uh, I've, I'm sorry that you do not have the money. Perhaps you can come I'm back really. when you do? Send me at most we can oh, muster. Send me the most we can muster is a measly 1,000 gold. Ah. Uh. He has no jewelry, or perhaps he mutters. Hmm. We're picking up somebody's uh, NRA TV. transmissions or ham radio. <laughs> no kidding, yeah. Mm. All right, so guys, it's he's looking at you guys expectantly, kind of shrugging his shoulders. Uh, perhaps you cannot afford the advice of the sages. Hmm. Certainly, I doubt one thousand gold will get as much of anything here. Uh, what's a plus one know. arrow worth? Oh, you guys barter for stuff. Um, Could I get him to lower his price? Well, you haven't tried yet. Uh, I can I can try and do a some haggling here. <laughs> okay. Go so for it, you guys. I mean, it's let's role play this. You're here in this room. All right, I got a two. Wow. Boy, that's very good. Sprite's just, Sprite's just holding out his thousand gold, trying to like get him to like, So what do you tell him? Could you just accept this for the advice? Come on, man. We're... The 2,000 gold? Just 1,000 gold. Oh, you rolled a two. I rolled a five, unfortunately. Hmm. The question is... Is possible, and he scoops the gold up. Okay, so that leaves me with 33 gold to my name. Wait here, I'll be back shortly with your answer. What to do with the shooting right. star? And he goes back toward the curtain where it parts in the middle briefly, and he disappears right. in the shadows behind the curtain. The two monks follow him deftly out of sight. That leaves us with gnomes. Oh, it just leaves us with the gnomes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And time's ticking by. Let's see. What can I do? Let's <laughs> Time to armor. 
And Kapuna is going up to Brother Merrick or up to Sprite. He goes, what do we do now? She says in this whisper. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. As he's going through his... The gnomes look professional. They're watching you quite closely now. They're all... And time ticks by. By two inches by how much? You're not sure where Lurg went or what he's doing. You don't hear anything. Uh, if possible, could the uh, caster and could could the caster and Tyra please obscure the gnome and <laughs> obscure him? He's really small enough. Uh, I'm just like, can I can I get behind somebody so I can quickly take care of the spell? Oh, I see. Uh, you can make a dexterity check. All right. That's a three. All right. <clears throat> you make it look like you're kind of whistling and, and walking around. I don't know. You guys got to play this up a little bit. It's been quiet out there. Uh, Tyra. Yeah. Are you there? An area effect of... I think it might be AFK. Oh, I see. He actually uh, timed out there, I guess. Oh, he's right out. Oh, no. Oh, shoot, guys. Right. Okay, that's why I was wondering things were quiet. Jeff, you're around, though, right? Yep. All right. Okay, so, Jeff, what do you do? How, you... Much, would this, um, how much would this area of effect cover? Uh, wh Half what's the area of effect? Half an inch by two inches by two inches. Okay, so that's five by 20 by 20. I mean half. That's what it says for the spell. That's what what, what spell is that? Spell. This is color spray. Oh, because it starts as a half and goes 20 by 20? It, yeah, it expands out. Color spray expands out. Starts at you. Yeah, it's wedge shaped as well. Yeah, and so it will encompass a, a possible area 20 feet wide. We'll say at, at mm -hmm. its apex. Okay. I'm casting the spell of vivid fan shaped spray of clashing colors spring forth from his hand from one to six creatures within the area of effect can be affected. Nice. Spellcaster is able to affect one level or hit die of creatures for each of his levels of experience. Wow, did you see that? Yeah, that's a effective spell. Um I'm just gonna try and get as many of the gnomes as I can. Okay, so uh, give me a moment. Now they're lined up on either side of the walls. There's two mm -hmm. still that you know of that are still in this room, and you guys do know that there are more in the other areas that keep. So time, surprise, and all that stuff kicks in. Do you want me to do color spray on some gnomes and see if I can knock them out? Um, you could. But gnomes get good up, bonuses against. That uh, ends badly for us. Yeah, it does. Yes, I do. Um, you might be better off doing something like mirror image on yourself. Mirror image on myself? Uh, let's see. Yeah, try affecting yourself rather than them. All right. Because they get stupid bonuses, mind affecting, and uh, mm -hmm. charms, and all sorts of other things. Yeah. You would, that. of course, know that being a gnome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I do have the blur in my. In my ring that I could use for free. And everybody, you you're you're sitting here for a while. Like uh, if you let it, the time go. The time, the, the minutes, seconds, minutes are ticking by. And Here's apparently, Lurg is doing his right, getting his visions or whatever. What's uh? Do spook. What's uh? Cupy doing? That's on, that's on one creature. Oh, QP is invisible, and she's uh, perched on your shoulder. Can't cast chaos yet. And doesn't detect any blatant evil. All right. Oh, she can detect magic. Um, no blatant magic. Okay, no, she's just being QP, being invisible. All right, let's see. 
So no, you're going to be preparing a spell or casting a spell, Sprite. Kapuna I'm just, I'm looking, pretends looking to look kind of formal and she kind of smiles at a few of the gnome guards and and then she starts to sort of uh, mm -hmm. saunter casually toward the curtain that they went through. And you see the guards stiffen somewhat as she gets a bit closer. So she kind of stops and wanders and smiles at him again. And and I'm going to roll a charisma track for her. Gestures of the illusionist. And she kind of shuffles toward the curtain and smiling. And the guards just a couple eyeball her, but they don't stop her. And, and she seems to be just checking out the curtains and real close there. Uh, Sprite, you're going to cast spell. Tyrath, what are you doing? I'm um, thinking of which spell I can cast. Mm -hmm. uh, sword comes out, and I get ready to start hacking my way through a bunch of gnomes. Oh, I can do hypnotism. You draw your sword? Uh, if I'm about to get assaulted, yeah. No, you're not going to get... No, no, nobody's assaulting you. Okay, oh. Everyone else getting ready to attack these gnomes. Why am I not going to do it? I'm just, I'm just thinking of which spell I can cast if I... If I want to, because I could do hypnotism on them. One to six creatures. Yeah, they'll also get a really good save versus that, but. Yeah. yeah. It's really shot. It's first level. And then Tyrath, if while well, thing, things seem to be developing a bit, you're. Well, who knows? As far as I know, you guys are just going to wait, right? Yeah. Well, unless okay. you guys want me to do hypnotism. I mean, that's fine. I guess I should wait, see what they do, because he's going to try to hit them. Yeah. If things go south. All right, so you guys just stay, and, and again, a, a, another minute goes by, like a, a full turn went by. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Another turn goes by. And so a full 20 minutes goes by. Like 20 minutes. I've got improved invisibility in my ring. You want me to do that? Big nose. Hmm? I said that would notice. Would they notice a gnome disappear? Oh, yeah. They're watching you guys pretty closely. All right. But now things have kind of normalized a bit, right? The ceremony's going on. They they seem to be mm -hmm. just kind of staying in their post. And okay, the seconds tick by, minutes tick by. <laughs> this is, I guess, a very intense question to ponder. Apparently, um, it seems everything seems to be normal. As you know, the gnomes seem to just sort of be watching you guys and. Uh, Kapuna has, has kind of moved around a little bit and is between you and me, she's kind of been scoping out mm -hmm. how this get by this curtain and, and just and looking around. Uh, another mm -hmm. full, anyone want to do anything before another turn goes by? For the moment, um, I'm just trying to figure out if there's any other ways for us to approach this situation that mm -hmm. doesn't involve us killing 10 gnomes. I'm going to see if I can't convince QP to do some scouting. Oh. I think she can go through the uh, curtain ahead. Sure. Um, you guys have about... Okay, you only have about five minutes left. It's good to know. Or, as far as you know, but you kind of mutter at QP, go, what do you want... Where do you want her to go? Um, let's see... Uh, let me get my character sheet in Dice World out of the way of the map. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got a curtain all the way around us. Can she uh, slip behind this curtain in anywhere and and see what we've? Yeah, she already taken? she already has scouted around the room actually, and she says she whispers to you that most of the curtains are fake except for this one over here, and there's a chamber back there where Lurg has been just set standing. He's just been standing there this entire time. Yeah, tapping his foot. Looking bored. Did he actually communicate with anybody, or...? 
Well, she just saw him and then came back, but there was nobody, just the two monks and, and, and him. And then he's just standing behind the curtain waiting. <laughs> he actually he pulled out some paperwork and he's attending some middle management. So he's not actually pondering this question. No, he's not. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, he's not. I think he's just waiting for us to do something. It might be a scam. <laughs> This is most likely a scam. I think this is a scam. Oh, wait. It's a, all a scam? Well, you're not sure which parts, but if he... <laughs> like, when QP comes back and tells you, Jeff, you're just... He's just... He's yeah. there. He's not talking or doing anything. He's just standing there doing paperwork. Yeah, he's, I just got like this... I said, catching up on... I, I have to make another cult, pop culture reference here. I just got the image in my head from... Uh, Emperor's New Groove, mm -hmm. where he falls through the bridge, and he's like, so all of it was lies? <laughs> Wait, no. yes, all of it. <laughs> so Kapuna has done a very good job of ingratiating herself into the corner here, mm -hmm. and kind of not drawing attention, and vaguely, you can tell she's standing very still, and sort of almost blending into the curtain somewhat. Mm -hmm. And But anyway, so now you've found out that this whole thing is a fucking sham. These monks are very convincing. No, the whole show is very convincing and very lucrative, like I said, and you're not sure. But is it, is it possible for, for me to be extremely angry at this point if I find that out? They just ripped us off a of three grand, right? Well, two grand. One grand, actually. Was it only one? I thought it was... Uh... It was only 1,000 gold. <laughs> I made him drop the price by like 2,000 gold. Okay, I still stand by the fact that he ripped me off of 1,000 gold, you guys. He ripped me off 1,000 gold. It wasn't out of your pocket, it was my pocket. It doesn't matter. You ripped somebody off. I want to punch somebody in the face. I mean, guys, somebody's got ripped well, off. Well, Tyrath, you may not... This. Well, I guess this is disseminated to the party. And you guys it depends are... depends on whether kind I of this issue. Some of those things are like in my. What's space. your intelligence, Tyrath? Uh, 10. Make an intelligence check. And intelligence check. An 18. So you're not, you're still expecting this monk to come back or the sage. Yeah. You're like, what is the scam? Um, well, it just was hard to convey that. Like, Tanriel mm -hmm. would know and he could kind of. Kapuna doesn't really know, actually. She's too far away. Sprite knows. You're smart. Brother Merrick. I probably, I probably put two and two together after giving him a thousand gold. And like, I don't know. If he's standing there doing paperwork. Brother Merrick is a holdout, too. He's sort of like, with Tyrath, he thinks like, oh, everything's legit. We're just... But he also remembers Hadley's words, and he's on tense because he knows, like, we, this is either with a showdown or we got to just leave. I'm not quite intelligent enough to figure out how stupid I look. <laughs> yeah, you're looking around kind of, what's going on? Um, if possible, Sprite would like to so check out some Lurk water. comes gracefully through the parting in the carpet again, and the two monks take up their formal stations on either side, and they stride forward. And I have to roll real quick for this monk here. When he fails, they fail to see Kapuna. Oh, wow. Yeah, like she's Dang just standing violently the still. the ripple of the curtain. And you guys are amazed. Like, you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, she's kind oh, of been goodness. forgotten. And the one monk that oh, was close God. enough to would have seen her didn't. And they both stride forward and, and Sage Lurg. Ah... Uh, your question has been answered. I have spoken to the stars, and your voice has been heard. You must seek the star on the endless horizon. There you will meet an ancient grasshopper, and he holds the secret to the star. And he, he gives you the scroll of paper. He reaches it out. Here are your instructions. I wish you well on this journey. Just like, kind of fucking, kind of fucking hurry another. I'm just thinking to myself, this is just. 
wow. <laughs> what a bunch of fluff. Well, if that's oh, not yeah. a scam, I've never heard one. <laughs> it it sounds very impressive, though. I mean, he delivers it in a very... It's and the, the scroll looks think, legit, and you can see, tell now that that was the piece of paper that QP was seeing and stuff. He was just. I think at this point the casters are looking at each other like this guy's full of shit. Well, they've got hey, ten gnomes here looking at you and a couple of monks, so he's like, "So, I, we, the tower thanks you for your service. Is there anything else?" Well, as I mean, one doesn't actually know what a falling star is, we will thank you for your attempt at answering a question. And oh, I you're going to egg him on. We will have to leave. You will insult his intelligence. Yes, I, I did. did. Because <laughs> that was the biggest bit of, bit of bullshit I've ever heard come out of anybody's mouth. Wow, he that just... 20. Um... He's got your money, <laughs> and he's uh, he basically doesn't clue in at all. This guy just seems to be the the greedy type, and it has no effect on him. He just it, you almost see a bit of a smirk on his face. I'm gonna quickly look at the instructions while I'm standing here. Uh, his penmanship is pretty impressive. Uh, you can tell that he basically. You've been given a sort of a, a, well, I don't know what, what, well, they gave you an intelligence check actually on that. Oh, Was it, it to, to know your penmanship and scholarly skills, right? Mm -hmm. Being an illusionist though, you would. Right, that's a one. Wow. So you will see that this is like fill in the blanks, friggin' punch out the dots sort of formula sheet. They're <laughs> mad living. <laughs> mad you get a mad, mad lib sheet. For... You're looking at it, just going, "Are you kidding me?" You can tell where the parts are dry and parts are wet, and uh, it's it's well done. He does great penmanship, and it's it looks. It's, it's, it's essentially mad libs for fortunes. So you you really right there. I mean, yeah, it it confirms everything. It's but still, you're still in the same predicament. I sort and, of like. I sort of bring. Just character close. I'm like, do you see, like, sort of whisper in the room? Do you see this fucking shit? Oh, yeah, that's that's totally a form. <laughs> no, yeah, this is like... now, if you said that out loud, now Sage Lurg, he goes, now, if you do, you have been given your reading, you must leave now. And he kind of looks meaningfully at the sergeant, and all the gnomes kind of click into this, you know, into this formal military sort of stance. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sergeant steps forward. Please, um, the reading is complete. And he gestures toward the double doors. Mm hmm. Why am I? There's the map. What the hell's going on with that? Alright, I'm thinking if they're going to lead us out, we can have Sprite go to the very back. His ability on himself. Sergeant, so escort them to. from the room. And all the soldiers come forward a few paces. And he goes, Please, you must leave now. And Lurg. Steps back a couple of paces. Mm -hmm. And Kapuna creeps up. Well, we will have to uh, follow while... Uh... Mm -hmm. It doesn't look good, I'll admit, guys. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. You guys, I don't know what to say. You could answer? leave. Oh. You can leave, or you can. I don't know what to say. I'll give you guys a minute. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, if we fight, there's a lot of them, and we don't exactly have the the level of oomph that we used to have. Um, I think it's almost like them. we're missing a third of our party. Yeah. 
I'm thinking we get escorted out. I sort of fall behind in invisibility. Sort of make my way back in to this chamber and sort of let you guys in. I like be the guy who unlocks the door from the other side if no one's looking. Yeah, but you guys would still have to get by the main guard mm -hmm. complex. Yeah, I mean, which we could do if we had enough invisibility to get us all, but I don't think mm. we'd do. Right. I've got two shots, one in my ring and one on one I can cast on myself. And I don't have greater invisibility. I've got improved in the ring. Could everybody make a, uh, a minus nine wisdom save? So roll your wisdom. Jesus Christ. Add nine to it. And oh, yeah. boy. That's going to give me a 25 check. It's impossible for me to fail unless I roll a 20. Which yeah, might, so is basically, just on the side of possible tonight. If you have nine or less wisdom, you have no chance. Okay, seven. I, rolled, I roll a seven. I rolled, a, I rolled exactly a 10, and my wisdom is a 10. Uh, yeah, but you got a minus nine from the roll. So you got um, a one. A yeah, I got a one and added nine to it. Oh, you rolled a one? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Well, um, Darren, the plus side mm -hmm. is I just succeed as well on a seven, so yay. Um, okay, give me a second. Because mm -hmm. you hear uh, a voice yeah, in your I, head, I, Sprite. I, I pass all day. Every all right. day. You guys all passed? Mm-hmm. I rolled a three. My wisdom is 17. So even with a plus nine, I pass all day, every day. Wow. <laughs> so you guys all hear the voice, a voice in your head, and it sounds like, uh, what's his face? That that black guy does all the voiceovers. Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman. Oh, closely. Morgan Freeman speaks to him right now. Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman, Morgan Freeman. I'm sorry, Morgan Freeman, but my life is going to have to be narrated by Samuel L. Jackson because my night <laughs> life requires the frequent use of the word motherfucker. Uh, I sense you close. Prevail. Interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, somebody posted a meme earlier that if you had a million dollars and you, every time you spent a penny, Samuel L. Jackson had to say, motherfucker, imagine what that would be like. <laughs> I would take the, the, the $10 million and the Samuel L. Jackson. Dude, but, I would slowly spend that shit. Yeah, just to drag it out. Exactly. Um, so I'm going to think back shelfy. It is I. Ah, I sense you. Close. You're in the questioning chamber. For what it's worth, yes. Ah, say this phrase. And he says something. I will repeat his phrase. Okay, you you're gonna say it's just this weird word. It's he. Choo. He says, "Say it loud." I will say it. Say it loud. Say it clear. Anyway, um, yeah, I will say his his phrase. Okay, the lurk steps back a bit and you know, looks at you quizzically and uh, chuckles a bit to one of the monks. And the gnomes step back a pace at this strange utterance. <coughs> hmm. And at that moment, the curtains erupt behind Lurg. What do they erupt into? This creature comes through the curtain. Can you guys not see that? Oh, hang on, let me see. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta move my character sheet. Hold on. Uh, I don't I see, see it. I see you, creature. That actually, for some stupid reason, looks like a machop. <laughs> a little bit. Okay, I see the creature. 
I mean, it doesn't look like Machop, mm-hmm. guys. Hey, this thing is an animated thing. It's it right. appears to be made. It's a live statue or something, and it's fashioned into the semblance of a robed human, mm-hmm. and is the same color and texture as the door is around. It's just oh, kind yeah. of weird hue. And this thing lurches forward, trong, trong, trong. It's um, it's some type of golem. Golem, golem. And so Please you guys are like, holy right. shit! And it just the curtains just tear around it as it comes forward, and we have to roll initiative now. Who's hey, rolling our initiative, guys? Okay. You want to? So I'll roll. Uh, I'll roll it, I guess. All right. Oh, I shouldn't have rolled it. Nope. Uh, no, you should not have. Okay, we're going to get the, they're going to, like, all 65 gnomes are going to get to jump on us. Thank you. And I can't I help roll it. Dice. I rolled 20 hates me sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's why I use roll dice. Uh, I rolled a one as well. Oh, everything okay. happened simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, neither one's surprised. Actually, you're both, actually, no, you're both surprised. Um, everyone's surprised. Like, gnomes, everybody. Like, uh, suddenly, you didn't know what was going to happen, right, Jeff? Yeah, nope. Everyone equally surprised. Oh yeah, and then all of a sudden, everyone there was about four seconds quiet, and they all kind of laughed and chuckled a little bit. And then all of a sudden, the curtains burst, and this creature comes stomping in the room. One of these gnomes spins around, of course, to defend. <laughs> um, <laughs> interesting. So let me roll. So we rolled ones. Nobody's surprised. Now we roll for initiative. Somebody else want to roll that? Yeah, I'll roll it. I got it. I rolled a one. So, okay. Looks like Nestor, from here on out, you're our you, initiative guy. Day one initiative. Nine. Now. To jump on. um, and I'm going to roll separately for the gnomes. You rolled a one, though, right? Yeah, okay. So they got initiative, guys. Uh oh. By, right. by the way, I sent a picture to you of exactly what the hell that thing looks like. I know. I know what you were talking about. Macho. That does remind oh. me of the meme that says sleeping with your Pikachu is cute. Sleeping with your macho is weird. Mm, strange. <laughs> Very yeah. strange. Now, I was going to say, you guys do get... Uh, you automatically won the initiative because the creature that came through the curtain. Mm-hmm. But you lost surprise. So you don't get a surprise action, which is too bad. Yep. That would have helped a lot. Could have taken out two or three of them, maybe. But you do get initiative, so we have spells act first. Now, you had a color spray. Are you going to color spray your way out Ready to rock? I'm not going to color spray my way out of this. I'm going to use the uh, improved invisibility that's in my ring myself. Oh, somebody's going to be GTFOing. Oh, so you can attack and everything. While you're invisible, yep. that's improved invisibility. Oh, so they'll be minus six attacking you. Oh, Four. Beautiful. Um, mm, unless boy. they have some means to detect you, but you're invisible. A true sight. Yeah. By the way, so, the color spray is the spell that made me hate Pathfinder. I actually color sprayed a bat swarm one time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. That is minus four on the to hit dice, and all saving throws must be made of plus four. I absolutely wish I was joking. All right, oh, it's plus four. I'm just trying to contemplate in my head how that worked. Yeah. Any other plus spells? Four for saving throws yep. and minus four. For now, that invisibility, yeah. is that instantaneous? That is... That's speed on it. Activate an item, right? Yeah, it's activate an item. item. I think so you, can, you, can still, you can still act. I thought I it actually it. cast the spell, but... Eh. Oh, it activates yeah, the spell? I think it does. I can't remember if it, so that if it works that way. Yeah, what right. it does is when you activate this, it actually, uh, because the spell itself is stored, it's not like mm-hmm. a consistent uh, effect. So I, not wrong button. I think I could be totally wrong. First edition, but it used to be they actually had to cast the spell out of the mon- out of the book. No, I'm gonna say you mm-hmm. can still axe sprite at the moment. You I, go, it's up you to you. It's your game, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you can still act. You can see the sergeant. He's like, well, his eyes go wide as you kind of blink out of existence, right? Basically. I mean, there's still like a shimmering sort of area. Yeah. Like yeah. Tell Trace. 
Yeah, telltale traces, a shimmering, so that an observant opponent can attack the invisible spell recipient. Nice. Uh, so any missiles? Spell of how to become a predator. Um, <laughs> nice. I'm gonna. So we've got multiple dudes here. Uh, does this creature look uh, like it's violent towards us, or is it like come out at at my word to like fight these guys? It's going right at Lurg. Okay. Well, if it's going for Lurg, I'm okay with it for the moment. Um. Actually, no. It comes into the room and looks at you, and you feel yourself in control when you said those words. You took con control of this thing. Oh well, then I'm going to send it at Lurg. Kill Lurg. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can I? Can I still act? Kill Lurg. Yep. Okay. Then, uh, for my turn, I'm going to cast a uh, flaming sphere so that uh, next round I can go bowling for gnomes. Nice. Nice. Uh, by the way, Darren, just as mm -hmm. a, I mean, again, your game, but the way it's written in the DMG, the wearer can employ just as if he were or she were a spell user of the level appropriate, which would indicate that you're supposed to actually cast them out of the ring. But oh. whatever. Your game, your rules, man. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Yeah, <laughs> this instance, you had time because they are no. surprised. Again, I'm just gonna, your game, yeah. your rules, man. You know how I feel about that. I just wanted to see how it actually read according to the I was. I meant to give you guys automatic surprise because when that creature came yeah. to the well, curtain. Well, you know what Tyra... You guys are in a tough <laughs> nut, I realize. You guys surrounded, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That internet crap itself. Yeah. Um, so go ahead. Tanriel? Um, I cast my Flaming Sphere, and I will go bowling next round, because I think it takes this whole round to do. Okay. And... I have to get my book back. Yeah, I've got all the spells loaded up here. I can look so Kapuna is going to try backstab this monk. A monk, a monk, a monk, a monk. But monk, because monk, he's a monk, I'm going to give him a long shot. Oh, it's a plus three. Uh, let me think. Oh, no, hold on. You guys won initiative or lost initiative. All right. Okay. So this guy attacks Brother Merrick. I guess Flaming Sphere. Miss. Three miss. Okay, so these two guys come forward and attack. Go to Brother Merrick, who is ready. And he just deflects their attacks. They both roll crap. Ooh, this is trouble, guys. Trouble. Mm -hmm. This guy hits Brother Merrick. Oh, man. Four points damage. This guy goes at Tyrath. These two guys go at Tyrath. Now, there is some confusion as to what's going on. So I'm going to make a rule here for the main guy. Okay, so the sergeant is like, detain them! What's going on? He's yelling out, but they're, the combat's already ensued. So he's kind of backing off, confusion a bit. <laughs> um, this guy attacks... Brother Merrick is surrounded by three guys. I Two of them missed, it. one of them hit. Uh, these two guys come in on Tyrath. You have to turn to confront them. That's fine with me. Let's say it's all okay as long as somebody says, am I being detained? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. One of them, unfortunately... What, what was the libertarian, chick <laughs> the libertarian chicken cr is crossing the road and is detained by the cops. What does he say? Hey, am I being arrested? <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, one die six damage. Okay, you took uh, double damage. You took six points damage, Tyrath. Uh, you hit a zero armor class? I rolled a nat 20. Oh, good lord, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm just I, I double checking here. As long as it's not to sovereign citizen level, it's all okay. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Tanriel, this guy comes in on your flank here. Okay. The sergeant backpedaled. He didn't. Uh, your AC is a oh, 15. Well, might hit it's, you, will it? It's zero right now. Oh, no. That probably won't hit then. Nice. That's definitely a miss. Um, I could make it lower if I wanted to, but that's impressive. Um, this monk guy runs forward and attacks. Now he doesn't see Kapuna because Kapuna gets a backstab. She's been actually waiting for this, so she's going to attack this guy before he lunges forward. Yeah, damn it! Rolled a three. <laughs> So he spins around and punches her with a 19. Uh -oh. Two to seven damage. So it's one die no, six. By the way, the invisibility blew around for like 10 rounds. I've just done the math. Ouch. So Kapuna gets smacked in the face. But not totally hurt. And Lurg sees this creature coming through the curtains and he backpedals close to you guys. He's caught in the middle. He's not sure. And he's casting a spell, though. <laughs> and suddenly there are th three Lurgs. Your image. And they do, oh, hey, who, oh, oh, they move around and they, oh, hey, oh, hey. Like, the hey, like, ho, hey. Which lurg is it? The one that screams. And the creature comes <laughs> in and attacks this monk. This thing is a stone guardian. It's actually do pretty I tough. That's two heavy attacks. Wham, wham. Ouch. And that monk's AC is not great. As most monks aren't. Armor class 7, so that's hit, hit. 17, okay. Let me damage here is ouch. 2 to 9, 2 to 10. Ouch. So 1 to 8 plus 1 both times. 13, 15 points damage. Don't go down, Merrick. It doesn't kill the monk, but he pounds it down. This wow, wow, these two iron fists. Or stone fists. Oh. And who's left here? Okay, so we got three lurgs. I still haven't gone. Uh, it's not your turn yet, quite yet. This these two dwarves go over here to attack the uh, creature that's threatening their siege, and mm -hmm. they both miss, miss, because that stone guardian's armor class is pretty good too. It's quite a creature. Um, any gnomes left? Oh yeah, this guy back here, he attacks your back, Tyrath. Mm -hmm. 11, no, 11 plus 2, 13. Your AC was 2 or 0? It's uh, 1 from behind. Oh, oh wow, okay. So that's a miss. Um, yeah. any left? That was like 1, 2, that was like 7 attacks. Tyrath mm -hmm. took some damage. Two. Brother mm -hmm. Merrick took some damage. Brother Merrick's in big trouble. Actually, he took a lot of damage. He's hurting. He's angry. Yeah. That too. All right, now it's your guys' turn. Okay. Which I'm the only one who hasn't acted. Everyone else, I think, has acted, haven't they? Well, I cast a spell on myself. Yeah, you're invisible. With the ring. Tanriel, what you were casting that fireball thing? Yeah, flaming sphere. Yeah. So, Tanriel, you're spell. good to go and. Oh, I was going to quickly look up, if you have a second, Jeff, look up a uh, pseudo dragon. Yeah, I got to get to. They're actually tough little critters. Yeah, they are. I've we'll got to get. what happens with this roll, so dice don't fail me now. 14. Now it is your turn to kill things. Uh, we'll we'll see. You guys might put them under. Uh, I roll a 14. And that should hit an armor class three, good sir, as I'm swinging at the guy that just hit me. Yeah, oh yeah. Sword. That connects. Uh, they're small creatures. That's 2D4. Ooh. Yeah. 2D4. Now Come on now. Yeah. 2D4 plus. Look at fuck. 
seven damage. As I swing this thing down on this poor <laughs> bastard, I'm going to bring every bit of wrath I can m muster onto this poor unholy gnome. Well, it's not his day. He pictured his sprite who's annoying you on your worst day. And yes. you you feel a sickening crunch as you connect with his helmet and his helmet caves in and goes right in and you can tell that you've done massive brain damage, <laughs> hemorrhaging, and mm -hmm. trauma as he goes down like a sack as, of potatoes. As my free action at the end of that, I'm going to hold my sword up and let out a scream. Hopefully it scares oh, people. Come make on. a charisma check. <laughs> I'm going the full wharf here. I hit a nat one. Are you serious? I am dead okay, serious. Everybody in the party gets plus one. <laughs> nice. To their attacks and actions. Whatever oh, they man. decide to do. As you're all... Tyrath gives out. You've heard it before. His horrific blood turtling screech. And you're all inspired by it. They're all minus one. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. As they all kind of cower back. And everyone hesitates a second as this half or seven foot half orc. Yeah. Word. Okay, guys, mm -hmm. our next goal for this for this game is to give me a bat -leth. A bat -leth. Don't ever forget that. Okay, I'll be right back. I gotta go turn at least... I either have to turn my heater off or my air conditioners off because one way or the other, something's gotta stop running here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, anyone else have to go? Brother Merrick has to go. Now, he's surrounded on three sides. He well, knows... He's going to spell storing. I don't think I've got an action... Yeah, Brother Merrick, I'm talking about the monk. Yeah. He still has to act, so he's, well, he's going to have to attack. He's going to try break out to the bottom. Mm -hmm. If I can get it. And he gets a very good hit. Unfortunately, monks are kind of pussies. Yeah, that's a good thing. At this point. Uh, what's his damage again? I'm looking real quick. Where's Brother Merrick? You might need to have to, you know, jumble around like five different character sheets. Yeah, I know. Box. Um, I don't see him. All right. Oh, there he is. I'm just looking for his damage real quick, but uh, he doesn't do a lot of damage. So, one die six plus one. Well, we'll see. Okay, he hits this guy <laughs> and does not finish him off. Boy, he gets five attacks every four rounds, so he's going to attack him hmm. again. Oh, God. And he hit him. Just, this guy's a pretty good arm glass. Oh, well done. And a hit's a hit. Oh, that's full damage. He follows up with an uppercut that kills this poor gnome. Wow. Who thunk it? Monk can actually... Kill something. I think, so he, I think Sprite cringes a little bit on the inside, seeing another <laughs> gnome die in front of him. Like, yeah, but he has, but well, now I'm he's not, not being that. attacked by his in his back now. Because I'm actually, not that gnome. No. Uh, so two gnomes went down, and they're they were all shocked by this attack of this creature, and so that round is over, right? Unless uh, QP, I was going to have Q. Uh, QP attacks one of the gnomes while visible, so gets this attack and then appears though. And you mm -hmm. see this, it snaps its tail. And this these pseudo dragons have the tail of a scorpion, right? They have a scorpion tip. Yep. Mm -hmm. It attacks as a plus four to hit die. And so that's a hit. I wrote that plus four is it's a 19. And this poor gnome has to make a save versus poison. Are going to a state of catalespi. Catet. What? Catalesp. What kind of word is that? Catalepsy. Yeah, that basically means they, they go uh, in the. They go cataleptic. They basically just sit there and stare. Catatonic? Space. Yeah, catatonic. Why did they just say that? Because mm -hmm. that would be too easy. Okay, I'm just and by the way, you have magic resistance of 35 right now. Fanrail. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And you said you guys see this little bat winged dragon 
land on one of these gnomes and is going to put him in a catatonic state unless he makes his save, actually, which is very good. Actually, these gnomes have this gnome has a save of uh, 12. Oh, and it just made it. All right, forget it. One to three damage. Mm -hmm. Three points damage. So this guy here, one of the gnomes, takes some damage. Okay, top of the round, roll initiative. All right. Rolling. Oh, I rolled a one. And I got a six. Did you roll a six? No. Yep. I have a homebrew rule I was going to bring in. If, on initiative, if you roll, a, if one team rolls a one and the other one rolls a six, mm -hmm. you get, a, in effect, a surprise round. Okay. It goes the other way, though, because the bad guys can get it as well. So basically, you guys have a full segment to, to do an act. Mm -hmm. You get a free action. All right. In that case, I was going to get your book, Brother Merrick. Do a uh, phantom armor if I had enough time to get that on him. Oh, help him out. Do you have to touch him or anything? I do have to get within touch, I think. Yeah. Yes, that is range touch. Let me have a look here to see if there's anybody. Actually, the he did he did kill the two guys down below, so you can move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, and you're small too, so you can go right on right through Tyrath's legs. Yeah, so I'm gonna get up to get up near him. Put okay. Put armor on him, and so we can have. I believe it's AC three, so long as the uh, enemy oh, wow. believes that it exit that it is real armor. Ah, oh, cool. That is and cool. So they have to make armor. a wisdom save or something. Uh, Semi illusionary material covers the subject. Unless the opponent actively disbelieves in the armor, spell saves versus spell. Uh, so at the moment, they'd have no reason. Now, as a DM, I would play it so if they attacked you and they they actually exposed the fact that the armor wasn't real or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Then I could give them a roll or, or expose it. But at the moment, that will work. Yeah. What's, what's the duration? The, uh, until it absorbs uh, damage equal to the level of the spellcaster. Okay, so things have been happening quick. That's just been one round. So you cast that spell. Anyone else have any spells? Um, Do you in a surprise little segment you get? If we get a surprise segment, I'm going to reach down and cast Cure Light. That'll be... Okay, on who? On Brother Marius. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's down to uh, mm -hmm. nine so hit points. Five more. Oh, yeah, you did. Did probably definitely needed the AC three then. Okay, so you give him five hit points. Yep. As a uh, Tritherion actually gives him the hit points. I'm just the guy that gotcha. mediates it. Right. <laughs> um. So I'm a level six illusionist on my sheets. So I'm imagining that'll be six damage it can absorb. So Tanriel, what do you want uh, to do during this surprise segment? Uh, well, I'm gonna manipulate my uh, flaming sphere as long as I can find it. Uh, uh, oh, really? in this book. <laughs> uh, okay, and while he's doing mm, that, Kapuna plus one now can't one. backstab, but she can attack that monk with the plus one sword. Yeah, he's got a. He's also got a plus one saving throw against. Oh, not twenty. Kapuna just skewered this monk. Um, let me roll the hundred sided to see. Okay, so double damage. Mm -hmm. That's I don't tell uh, long sword is one die eight. An no, it's one die ten, I think. A long sword. A long sword is a one die eight against. Is it a large creature? No, it's a one die eight. So mm -hmm. four plus. Now she plus one long sword. Yeah, and she doesn't have strength bonus, so five. So she does ten points damage to this monk. Monk has to be dead. He's not quite dead. But he's very wounded. Indeed. He is quite wounded. Um, that stone creature doesn't affect, doesn't have an attack, surprise attack. Anyone else not move on your surprise action? Not on my surprise action. No, I didn't move on my surprise. 
Everybody did their thing. Okay, now roll initiative yeah, again. I'm not, I didn't get to go, but... Oh, yeah, your, your sphere. Yeah, your flaming spear. Yeah, flaming I gotta spear. find the fact that it's in a different book. Oh, yeah. Because it's not in the player's handbook, because that would be too convenient. It was it Unearthed Arcana? Yeah, I think I mean, so. That's why it's not listed on my uh, list of spells. And there's three lurgs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the casting time was two segments, so I could have technically done it last round, but oh well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to last for three rounds. Uh, one is just comes into being an inch distance from me, uh, and I can move it. Uh, and you realize Lurg is a spellcaster. Mm -hmm. Which means he can easily just dispel all of our stuff. He doesn't seem particularly high level. He's more of a charlatan, but he does have a couple of little spells. Might be an illusionist. He's got a mirror image. Yeah, exactly. I am... Right He's here, so... You know, stab at him. It comes into being within 10 feet of me. So I'm going to basically have it come in uh, into being on the closest Sage Lurg, and it'll move 10 feet on my round this round. So I'm going to go bowling through Lurgs. Bowling through Lurgs? <laughs> yeah, bowling and, and every muck within 5 feet of it's going to take damage to uh, it, These are 10 foot squares, so you won't hit any monks if you go through the Lurg line. That's fine, yeah. but his spell will go away. And okay. one of them is hit, it's going to hit, get hit, so he'll take... Uh, okay, roll six-sided die. Okay. Destroy it. To see which, which one I hit first. No, just to see which is the real Lurg. Ah. Uh, six. Okay, the, you start the sphere, and it... it cooks up and the first one's an illusion the fire just burns through it and it's just mm -hmm. kind of pfft, right the next one's an illusion and the last lurg is backpedaling frantically mm -hmm. but you still get an attack what kind of damage does that thing do uh 2d4 if i hit them directly or 1d6 if they're within five feet of it well you hit him directly but does he get a save uh they get a uh, save uh, negates the flaming, uh, negates a successful save, negates the flaming sphere. I think it negates the damage. Uh, okay, he did not make his save. Let me double check. 11 isn't going to cut it against spells. Okay, so he will take 2d4 points of damage. So give me a second here. You know what? Uh, it was close. His. <laughs> he actually needed a 12 for 5th okay. le oh, level oh. illusionist. He takes 4 points of damage. Lurg! Of okay. burn damage. Burn. Mm -hmm. It's got a few hit points, but... And these guys disappear. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah! Hiss. Still alive. Hiss, hiss, uh, burn, burn, fire. Yeah. Go for the caster. And the that's moves. that's the surprise phase. So now we roll initiative again. Yeah. This time I rolled a six. Uh -oh. yeah. Also a six. Wow. So simultaneous. All the actions are going to happen regardless of the consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, but with spells first, of course. Time to stabby stabby. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Lurg does have a spell. Does anyone else have a spell? Uh, yeah, because this is a. I can maintain this one and cast instance, right? That it works that way in this edition. Or uh, there's no concentration in uh, first edition, is there? What's the duration of the spell? Like, will it keep going? Yeah, it lasts for three turns because I'm third level magic user. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. 
So as long as I keep pointing it in a direction, it'll it'll go until I it it burns out. But mm-hmm. um, that's all I have to do is you know tell it roll this way, boy. So wow. um, I'm gonna magic missile Lurg. <laughs> Good call. Because Lurg. How many magic missiles, missiles do you have now? Uh, I'm third level, so two, I think. Oh, yeah. I think you start uh, with three, don't you? No, no, you get three. I think one's for every, I usually three, say yeah. one for every level. Uh, let's it's, see. It's, uh, it's you get so many to start, and then starting at third or fourth level, you get an additional one for every so many levels. So it's, it's weird how the math does. Mm-hmm. Magic missile. So fire Third away one RK magic missile, which duh, 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 duh. and I get an additional one. Oh, I'll be right back. Uh, at every two, I get an additional missile. So two at third level. So you should have, a, you should have more than two. Yeah, you should have four missiles, shouldn't you? Uh, no, uh, you start with one in first edition. I thought you start with two. Uh, I got it was more than one, dude. Because I've used the stupid spell enough times at this point. Use of the magic missile creates one or more magic missiles, which dart uh, from magic beast to the sand. I think strikes doing what one d four plus one. The magic user has multiple missile capability. He or she can have them strike a single target. Okay, yeah, you're two. actually not wrong. This is this is where we get always get weird. Yeah, you have two at third level, editions, three yeah. at fifth. Yeah, it actually says two at third level. Yeah, cool. crossing editions, it, it happens. Yeah, yeah. 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 but your freaking range is ridiculous now. So where were we? Uh, um, how missiles he had. Now, there's only been oh, two I, rounds have gone by, everybody, by the way. Mm-hmm. And so, I get two missiles, and he takes uh, seven points of damage as the missiles slam into his chest. Not to mention, you've got a, a 10 inch range now. Yeah. Sorry. So, 100 feet, yeah. Nine, six, seven, eight, seven, eight. Nine inch range. Know. Yeah, he's in range. Either way. Nice. He will be in range. He's in range anywhere in this room. Yeah. Wow. Boom. All right. So you hit him. He's not down. He's pretty tough illusionist. That's Are fine. Still I'm still pointing at him. I'm still pointing at him with the, for the flaming sphere. So <laughs> he burned the bomb. He needs to save to see whether or not he, he takes damage. Now he's casting a spell at the same time at you. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm, I'm still targeting him with the Flaming Sphere. Yeah, now this spell is going to hit one of his own gnomes, but it's also going to hit Tyrath and Tanrail. And mm-hmm. it's going to hit that gnome in front of Tyrath as well. And this is a color spray. You see this ripple effect of colors come out from his voice as he oh, mutters. Oh, so range of that? Oh, yeah, I'm right next to the guy, right? He point, yeah, he points it right in this direction. He's like, hits one of his own guys. Now, the way this works, upon casting the spell, the illusionist causes a vivid fan-shaped spray of clashing colors to mm-hmm. spring forth from his or her hand. From one to four, one to six creatures within the area of effect can be affected. So I should roll one dice six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which ones he's gonna get? So he gets all in the area of effect. So he gets Tyrath, Tanrail, and the Gnome. Mm-hmm. The spellcaster is able to affect one level or hit die of creatures for each of his her levels of experience. So he has he can affect five levels. I have so seven dice. Nice. I have yeah. six. So oh, wow. it's only going to pretty much make that poor now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, third level so assist, uh, third Okay, level no, hold on. It mage, says here. So. Uh, here's my uh, if their level or number of hit dice is one or two greater than the illusionist, they are stunned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you still stun. Okay, you're even for two, to eight eight for, for two to eight segments. If it's their level, level or number of hit dice is three or greater than the spellcaster, all creatures. Oh, no, that's uh, okay. Hold on. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Um, 
Affected creatures are struck unconscious for two to eight rounds if their level is less than or equal to that of the spellcaster. They are right. blinded for one to four rounds if their level or number of hit dice is one or two. So right. both of you make saving throws, and if you fail, you are blinded for one to four rounds. Well, before I make a saving throw, so I need to roll a percentile die. Oh, yeah. The magic resistance. <laughs> well, guess what? I'm blind. And I'm blind. So you're see, minus I'll, four. Let's see what, how many rounds I'm blind for. I'm blind for three rounds, Darren. Yay. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Mark. Well, the magic resistance didn't work, so let's do the d20. I uh, Mark let's here. see. I am blind. And then I got to calculate some bonuses here, too. So, Oh, you failed your that. magic resistance? Yeah, I rolled an 82. So, oh, okay. so uh, it's pretty tough combat, guys. And <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to give so, you guys some benefits, but you guys are doing good. Hopefully, we can so do I this. I rolled a 14, but I have a ring of protection plus two. So, Ooh, that's that was. Be close. Oh, by the way, to a fourteen. Um, <laughs> and I have my uh, iron stone, which gives me the plus two to my saving throws. So that's plus three on top of my twelve. So that raises it to fifteen. Uh, so I pass. So you're not blinded. Nope. Tyrat mm -hmm. suddenly is like ah. Now, did you add that plus one you guys got for his inspiration? Yeah, yeah, I'm totally like I, I rolled well, well, a nine. Yeah. I need a fifteen. Okay. So Tyrat mm -hmm. is in trouble and he's flailing around. You're minus four in your attacks, mm -hmm. or to anything, well, to do physically. Uh, uh, now back to this little combat here with the statue thingamajigger. <laughs> it so, gets a nat twenty. Uh, before you you do that though, uh, he still needs to roll to see if he saves versus the fire sphere, or if I get to burn him again. Oh, simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he. Okay. He avoids damage this round. No, that's a. Oh yeah, he he does. Yeah, you're right. He made it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sphere is still going, and you're not blinded, so you can still affect it. So the golem guy got a nat twenty. On the monk. I feel That's bad gonna hurt. Monk. Yeah, but I rolled shit. Oh, Mark. But that monk only had two hit points left. And I rolled a double damage. I rolled a one. Did two points damage. It just killed the monk. Mm -hmm. He squishes the monk, crushes him down. And then these two dwarves attack the creature. But that creature has amazing armor class. Mm -hmm. Armor class two. He's yeah, a first, a first level fighter. They need an 18 to hit. They're plus one. They need a 17 hit. They miss, miss. Boy, that rock guardian is going to come in handy, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, these two guys miss. Now Kapuna attacks that monk. I'm just letting all the other Ooh, that's people a hit. take care of their stabbing before, right? Oh, she's doing quite well. Three plus one, four points damage. She doesn't have any other bonus. The monk's still alive. The monk attacks her back and rolls a one. So I roll percentage, 24. The monk loses initiative next round, so he attacks last. Mm -hmm. And Kapuna doesn't get hit. Now moving across, this sergeant guy, he's... He's running by everybody toward the double doors. And that's uh, 10, 20, 30 feet. He gets to the doors. He's going to open the doors. Probably alarm. Next round. Uh, who's left? Okay, this guy up here attacks Brother Merrick. Oh, Ma Brother Merrick should attack first, but it's simultaneous action. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and I still haven't attacked anybody this round, so... Yeah, you're um, blind, but still in I it. Can, so I can. Guy, I can I can my rest. attack is only at minus two, by the way. Yeah, I just gotta stab somebody. <laughs> That's all I gotta do. Okay, you guys go ahead and do your actions, then we'll we'll compile your attacks first. Go ahead, Tyrath. 
Uh, yeah, I totaled a nine. I got. Do you have weapon specialization because you get two no, I, no, three attacks I, every two rounds? Oh no, yeah, you're a cleric. I'm a cleric, but uh, I have a. It won't matter. I've got um, I they get to my normal attack, but that I get the plus one from the inspiration and plus one from the uh, strength. But I still rolled an eleven on that, so minus the uh, two mm. is a nine. So not good. I kind of blindly uh, stab into the ground. Sprite. All right, I'm gonna go up to Leonard and stab away with my long sword, with my short sword, plus one short sword. <sighs> All right, go ahead. Where is Sprite? Oh, there you are, You're behind that giant shield. Nineteen plus one twenty to hit. Wow. I'm assuming that'll hit him. Oh, yeah. All right, that's a D6. Oh, yeah. Uh, wait, don't you have the long sword? Or do you have... Short sword, I said. Oh, yeah, short sword. It's plus one, on, though, isn't it? Yeah. Right. And you have dual attacks? Mm-hmm. Ooh. So I'm going to follow up with the... So that's five damage to him. Okay, sword. that hurt. All right. Taking this in minus two. Actually, yeah, that cancels that cancels out my minus two to hit with the dagger because my bonuses. Right. So eighteen to hit. That is a hit. The armor class is four, but eighteen will cut right. it. Five damage. Well done. All right, so that's 10 damage to hit him. He's down. You guys are killing gnomes. <laughs> well done. No, no, that was Lurg. Oh, that was Lurg. Yeah, that was the wrong Lurg. Oh, sorry. Well. I imagine the caster doesn't have that high of an AC. You avoided his color spray being so short into the side. Mm hmm And that, you, you skewer him. All right. <laughs> It's official. You guys are <laughs> invading the tower. Mm -hmm. He goes down. I feel bad for killing the sage, but he was an illusionist. He might have a spell book. Oh, they definitely do. Uh, anyone left? Brother Merrick. So he yeah, there were the gnomes on Merrick. Oh, he, he hits the wounded guy he was fighting because he wants to try to finish him off. Mm hmm. Oh, that sucks. He had four hit points left. I rolled a three. Yeah, I totally forgot that we would get extra XP for not killing this dude. Yeah, triple XP. Well, the, 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 the problem here is he didn't really give us an option when they gang rushed us. Yeah. I know. Yeah, well, it was very, it was pretty blunt uh, result. Um, it is what it is. It, I think the triple XP was kind of out of the question. <laughs> I uh, know that's why it's triple XP. <laughs> it's like, well, that's it would have taken some very deft diplomacy or some sort of some really good, I don't know, levels. knocking everybody out or something. Yeah, exactly. It, it would have been hard, but and, uh, it got sleep. Yeah, it was a bit, bit hackneyed. We're into it now, though. Blood's flying, gnomes mm -hmm. are dropping. <laughs> so he didn't quite kill this, kill this gnome. The gnome attacks him back and rolls a <laughs> one. Against an AC3. Against an AC3 and a percentage die. Okay, so the gnome doesn't do anything dramatic on his failure. The other mm -hmm. gnome attacks him. 13. Now Merrick's... Oh, AC3. Okay, that's a miss. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that guy ran to the doors. Oh, yeah. Okay, that one attacks Tyrath. Yeah, no, uh, an AC0. Okay, now you can't, you don't get your shield bonus on that. Why am I get my shield bonus? Oh, well, technically he's blind. You're so you blind. Mm -hmm. right, still AC1. And that's a miss, okay. And then one on the other side of you attacks and misses. Uh, the guy attacks Kapuna, the monk. Now this monk gets, did I do two attacks last round? No, I didn't. So the monk gets aye, aye, aye. Holy two man. attacks this round, open handed. Wah! Goes in on Kapuna. Rolls like a champ. 17. That will hit. So, ah, strikes her. 2 die 7 damage. So, 1 die 8 minus 1. 
does one point damage to Kapuna. Hey. All right. All right. So did I miss anyone out? Uh, Lurg's dead. He cast his color spray, and that did affect Hyrath. No, he's, he's officially dead. Now, will that spell end now? No, the effect is still there. He's still blind. Mm -hmm. Next round, though, the Sarge is going to hit the doors. He's going to run through the doors. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Why do I think this is about to get so much worse? Unless you can sort of skewer him. Okay, I rolled a uh, two for initiative. All right. I got to roll initiative. Natural six. Awesome. I love Okay, so you guys act first. Now, everybody sees the sergeant running to the doors. He's probably going to get help, and he's the sergeant. Um, Tyrath, you are no longer blind. Yeah, he is. I'm blind for two more rounds. Uh, two more rounds. Yeah. <laughs> but Brother Merrick is going to... Anyone got a spell they can cast, by the way, first of all? Me. Uh, all right. I, spell. I can uh, magic, missile him. magic missile the sergeant. Oh. Okay. He says... Gets a few more hit points than the rest. The rest of these gnomes are generic first-level fighters sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. This guy might be second level. Well, it's okay, though. I mean, damage is damage. Damage is damage. <laughs> so, damage. no saving throw. These... Points of damage. Six? Yep. And how far away is he from me? Uh, about 20 feet, 25. Oh, he's in range. Uh, yeah, well, he's in range for magic missile, but I can't roll my sphere into him this round, so... Mm -hmm. Um... He's dead. Uh, these guys over here are generic monks, right? The all of the little guys that don't have a, a name on them. Right, they're gnomes. Generic monks. I'm gonna no. run into that that one that's uh, above the guy with the eyeball on him. Oops. That would be Tyrath. That would be above me. Yeah. Yeah. Preferably avoiding Sprite, who is currently invisible. So you don't need concentration to maintain that spell? I just got a point. Because you, you wouldn't be able to cast Magic Missile if you're concentrating on a sphere, right? Uh, it's just set duration, so it's not okay, concentration I'll, that I know of. I'll let it slide this time. I yeah, think. duration one round per level, so I got one more round of it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, magic's powerful and one E. So that goes into this guy. He makes a saving throw, or does he? Ooh, that's close. Versus spells, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, he doesn't make it. Oh, no, gnomes are... Uh, you need a 17 minus... Oh, he failed. That's brutal. All right. Mm. That's surprising. So and he only had two hit points left. Oh, he's he burns. He burns, yeah, he burns a lot. Ah! And then Shriek and then the the fire sputters out this round, or is it one more? What Tyrat's going to take this person? Oh, he keeps killing everyone awesome. in front of him. He's blind, so he's like, I smell burning gnome. It smells like gnome bacon. <laughs> Making gnome bacon. Gnome <laughs> bacon. When can I make gnome bacon? Um, Brother Merrick is going to desperately lunge at that sergeant. Tackle him down. Turn and attack him. But if he misses, those two guys are going to attack him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will see you in it. Okay. Hey, look, he's got 14 hit points, okay? So let's hope he lives. Yeah, and he can absorb... Not six. 20. Oh, he's not missing. He does double damage. I didn't roll good for his percentage. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I rolled, oh man, he does 10 points damage. That sergeant is dead. Oh my god. You've among three AC and he is officially like... Yeah, he gets goes to his head. He kills that sergeant as he sprawls. He's about to open the door and he just gives him the a, 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 a C3 to the back of the neck. Just gives him a real good jab to, to the base of the neck. And guards the door. Yeah, and he basically guards the door. 
Let's see what Tyrath can do to stab wildly into this gnome that's in front of him. The last gnome. I think that's a gnome in front of him next to uh, Jeff there, right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one uh, there. Definitely yeah. in front of you. You can hear him. <laughs> you guys are taking. You guys have kicked nope. ass here. I rolled a total of four. I almost stabbed Ward to <laughs> ten <laughs> rail. Almost, almost, almost hit QP out of the air. And Sprite's right next to you. Uh, Kapuna is still fighting this I, monk. I never claim to be anything but a half orc, guys. Never forget that. Mm -hmm. and that is going to miss. She's a third level fighter, though. You'd be surprised. God damn it. Monks have <laughs> shitty AC, man. That's I need my thing. fighter level to go up again, so my freaking, uh, or my cleric level to go up against so my freaking. She hits. She hits the monk. They have mm -hmm. AC 7. Oh, uh, that's why I'm not fighting these people. Ooh. Oh, monks in their low level suck so bad. Okay, so it's five plus one, six points damage. She nonchalantly skewers this monk. Mm -hmm. And All she right. feels quite good about that. She's like, ah. How about you? So the bodies are dropping. Mm -hmm. Things don't look so dire as they did. Um, anyone left? Anyone left? No, we're on to the next round. Their attack now. Actually, their turn. Mm -hmm. He's dead. He's dead. So this guy runs at Brother Merrick and, of course, attacks him. AC3. Miss. But it attacks his back, so it's plus two. But still misses. Mm -hmm. This guy here attacks uh, Tyrath and hits. Honestly, wow. He hits an AC1 on a 16. Yeah, but you are uh, you don't get your shield bonus. I'm still at AC1. Oh, wow. I'm wearing I'm wearing filled plate, sir. <laughs> that's a miss. <laughs> <laughs> now it's attacking your rear, even at plus two. That's a miss. Yeah, because <laughs> I give you plus two on a, a rear attack. Well, I mean, I don't have I don't have an AC bonus from my decks either. So no, an eighteen won't even get you. He needs a nineteen and <laughs> our AC one. Um, the guy in front of you attacks, and these guys need. He rolls a one, and you get an attack of opportunity on him. Yeah, hey, well, hey guys, you want to stab that. wildly at this? Okay, I rolled a three total. Hmm. <laughs> I'm like, these two gnomes uh, are rolling a morale check. Guys, get away from me before I stab you. <laughs> and these two guys failed their morale check. Uh, up I here. Be afraid of me, too. And they run away from that stone guardian thing. And they basically run to this side of the room, and they're running. They're like, ah! Man, too bad I can't stab one when it passes. Uh, yeah, he acted already, sort of. I'm um, looking to see if anyone else had to act. No. So it's next round. Rule initiative. Okay. I rolled a five. Got a five as well. Simultaneous action. You guys get plus one though because they are leaderless and demoralized. You killed the sergeant, you killed Lurg, the monks mm -hmm. are dead. <laughs> There's like uh four of them left. Uh what mm -hmm. two of them are wounded. And so that'll be five plus one then. Um in fact, they Gosh. surrender. Okay. Huh. First time I've had an enemy surrender to me. Yeah, they one, two, there's four of them left. Oh no, wait, there's five. Let me make a morale check. Those two guys have failed at the moment. The rest of them are still in the fight. One, two, three. It's one guy by Brother Merrick, two by Tyrath. Mm -hmm. And these two guys are just kind of running away, but they could recover if they make their morale check next round. Mm -hmm. So I rolled a five, and you guys rolled a five as well. Okay, so it's Ty again. I'll let you guys act first. Your actions. And the Stone Stab Guardian to comes me. to a stop, though, by the way, because Lurg's dead. All right. going to stand the closest thing to me. I'm All right. I will uh, the closest thing, thing would be this turn. guy here. So blinded. It. All right. Last round, though, for you, right? Yeah, it's last round, but I'm still blinded. It. Alright, 19 plus one hit with a nice sword. Now it turned into a bloodbath, by the way, guys. <laughs> I didn't yeah. I was kinda hoping things would go diplomat uh you know, diplomacy or stealth, but mm -hmm. sometimes hmm. 
anyway. Sometimes the best answer is... is yeah. Hey, I, I just posted that in the group, guys. That's Absolutely. awesome. Right. What, what, what's the uh, old statement? Uh, com- combat only survives first contact with the enemy. Or yeah, yeah battle plan. Yeah. Uh, roll damage um, there. All right. Five plus one to six. Oh, you, he's still alive, barely. You sink your blade under, get underneath some armor. All right, and dagger. Follow up. I it. Okay, so now he simultaneously turns to swing backhand to you. And me? As, as he dies. Oh, you're going to try and attack me? Simultaneous action. That's a, that's a minus four to hit me. Oh, wow. It's a minus four, a minus, minus six, depending on, I don't know, it's, uh, whatever Darren wants to call it. Uh, what's your minus four for? Invisibility. Invisibility. Oh wow! Yeah, no, I, I, I say automatically minus four disadvantage because you skewered him and he just lashed out mm-hmm. and misses. What's your AC? I have an AC of two. Wow! So you're so small. He just totally. It, all gnomes are small too, but you're only two. I'm two feet. I'm two feet shorter. <laughs> wow! So he makes a cut and misses. Woof. And moving on now to Tyrath. And I gotta do my natural 20 dagger head. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He goes down. Um, he had one hit point left. Okay, so anything I did with that dagger would have killed him. So Tyrath, you feel blood splatter your face. Yeah, blood. Sprite's like, I got him. And you still know that there's a guy behind you who was cutting at your armor, hacking yep. away at your plate. Yes, he was. I think there was. <laughs> He's still there. Just to be totally creepy, as the blood splatters on his face, he's going to lick his lips. He's going to have like this Gene Simmons tongue come out and just like lick himself clean. That's okay. <laughs> Pretty funny. Is it actually my attack or? It is. Okay. He's going to try to stab the guy that he thinks is at his back. I actually roll a total of 14, which is going to hit an armor class of three. That will do. You actually hit somebody while blind. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you connected finally. So a total of seven points, Darren. So I, I somehow know that I bring the sword around blindly, and I just kind of swing it wildly, and I just feel muscle and sinew just separate. Yeah, it him. bites. It cuts through armor, sinew, mm-hmm. flesh, and you get that satisfactory <laughs> jarring impact. And then and I a break follow out, through. I break out in a huge grin. I almost have a little pang of guilt because it was a gnome. <laughs> but, <Not really. laughs> but being a half orc, you're like, I hate gnomes. Exactly. Hey, Kyle, there is not enough fire <laughs> for that doll. I consider you a friend. <laughs> there's not. Oh, yeah, it's there's a not carnal enough. house. This place is, used, there's blood splattering the carpets and <laughs> curtains. Uh, these two dwarves see their only way out is that, that doorway. And they run that direction. Now, Brother Merrick is, is spins around, and he's and of course, there's three gnomes bearing down on him. They're all trying to escape, and he's blocking the door, and he's like, nope. Um, he feebly tries to hit the one guy and mm-hmm. misses, and that guy follows through with a feeble swing of his own, and the panicky, demoralized guy runs at him in a panic, swinging his blade at minus two and whiffs, and the other guy just clumps into the background, waving his sword ineffectively. Wow, that's some terrible that rolls. Great rolls, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> so all three of these gnomes pile on Brother Merrick and he's just deflecting his feet and hands are flashing oh. around. And he's this that phantom armor, they're totally buying it. Like their weapons are glancing off of this sort of fake image. Mm-hmm. It's just really weird. And then QP comes up behind one of them and taps him in the neck. <laughs> and he goes down like it's actually unless he rolls like a champ. Well, she. Oh wait, that didn't work. Okay, hold I'm on. I'm expecting the pseudo dragon to take down. Uh, you have to roll under. No, no, you have to roll above. Oh, he failed his poison. So that guy goes comatose. He goes down like a rigid board. <laughs> well, I call victim. <laughs> I mean, I call dinner. I mean, interrogator. <laughs> yeah, gnome goes down, catatonic. QP floats up. Uh, is everyone left now? The stone guardian stopped walking. He just stands still. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody left that that's up? No, the place is a surprisingly bloody mess. Well, not surprisingly, but 
So aside from those two that are on Brother Merrick, it's relatively uh, empty. There, there's about to be less than on that. On him now I'm going to roll a morale check for those two schmucks who fail. <laughs> and they, they throw down their weapons. These two gnomes, just Brother Merrick and and QP's snapping around him. Um, and they just throw down their weapons. No oh, mercy, mercy. Uh, so Darren, I will have the stone guardian come pick them up by the scruffs of their necks and hang them up off the ground. Clang, 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 clang. That's a pretty elaborate command. Well, this is well, a walk over, question. grab. Oh, oh make make a uh, force. Uh, a roll six sided for me there, Jeff. Okay. Uh, make a distinction because Tyrath's in a blood fury at this point. He's been stabbed at, beaten on. <laughs> well, you're blind. Oh, no, I was blinded anymore, by right? somebody. I'm not blind anymore, but I was blinded. I am pissed off, and these are the last two objects of my rage. So <laughs> okay. can he command him to do this fast enough to keep me from breaking and cutting off limbs? Right. <laughs> and everyone pile on and try to stop you, maybe. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> but, much. It's going to be like a rugby tackle. Right. Now, Jeff, <laughs> you, you have control of that thing for three turns. Hard. For half okay. an hour. Wow. Awesome. And it comes walking across the floor, clang, 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 but it won't reach the gnomes. Because okay. Tyrath, now you're bl you're not blind anymore, right, Tyrath? Your vision no, comes yeah, back, I'm and you're like, you see, and yeah. Uh, I'll I'll get you to, you could make a wisdom roll to see if you can control your rage. Play my strong suit. I roll a five under 16, so I'm able to contain my rage. Yeah, you're not completely lost it, but if you would have <laughs> failed that, you would have been berserk. You would have went <laughs> I would have started eating these things. That would have been awesome. So I you go up to them, though, and you grab them. I'm going to hold them up, and if they fight too hard, I'm going to clank their heads together to knock them out. Yeah, they're panicking, and you just wham! <laughs> <laughs> and All they right, drop. I'm gonna, I'll check and learn real quick. Question, Darren. Do you want me to roll any type of damage to see if I actually accidentally kill them? I do have an 18-13 strength. <laughs> no, they're wearing helmets and stuff. And okay, yeah, <laughs> that's a legitimate question. They it would have, it. Yeah, they do have. Oh, how many hit points does that one have? Seven and seven. No, okay. they were fresh. They were okay. They're good. Mm. <laughs> no, it's not a problem. And Capoon is looking around. Hi, Caramba! What have we done? Quick, we must hurry. And she's already at the curtains, by the way. I'm checking you losing your spine real quick. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, roll a uh, dexterity check. Okay. Um, he has a gold chain belt that looks very valuable. So, question, right. Derek. Do any of these gnomes anywhere, including the That's sergeant? Or gnomes, dexterity. Just hold on one sec. One at a time. Uh, your dexterity, you made your dex save? Yeah. You just so, see an invisible gnome start looting through a illusion body. <laughs> Uh, he has a gold belt, and he also has a oh no um, spellbook. Doesn't have a spellbook with him. Not on him. Okay. Nope. Gold belt. I'm just looking, and doesn't really have much else. He has some trinkets. Not much. Yeah. Uh, and go ahead, Kyle. You were saying. Uh, would one of these gnomes or a couple of these gnomes have sets of manacles, perhaps that we can lock these guys up with? You guys probably have rope or something. Well, we do, but I would rather use manacles if we can find them. No, they don't. Oh, okay. We just get them. I... Now, I the doors are still control. closed, and everyone's like, it's only been about two minutes. You, okay, so, I'm check, I'm so you know, if I'm the one tying these gnomes up, I am not being control about this. No, we're going to have, like, blood loss. <laughs> we're gonna have amputations <laughs> well <laughs> I... I'm like i'm gonna tie them up with their hands tied to their ankles behind their back and mm -hmm. i'm gonna ensure that i pull their their wrist as close to their ankles as possible before i move their legs okay so you're hog tying them really painful <laughs> um you see kapuna slip through the curtains and mm -hmm. she's gesturing at sprite she's like hurry let's get out of here I'm checking his gold belt real quick. Yeah, you're not sure. It looks pretty fancy. Intelligence check? Uh, you don't have much time. All right, I'll check it later. Yeah. Shall we continue in? Like in uh, I would say... I'm literally an invisible gnome right now, gesturing towards the door. Like We can't like, see hey. you gesturing. You are aware of this, right? 
What's the duration on that spell, by the way? All right, that is um, a couple. It's like a couple. It's like a minute. Now, Jeff, you have control of this monster for another um, thirty minutes. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, so you got about twenty-eight <laughs> minutes now, and this thing clang, 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 clang. Let's you go. Four guys. rounds plus one round per level, so that's. Yeah, I'm just taking a quick look here, a minute. Okay. Um, yeah, so Kapuna's like, at, she's holding this curtain aside and she's like, come on, you guys, let's go. I guess we're leaving these poor gnomes behind where I've hog tied them. Up. <laughs> the other wake up with purple hands. Yeah, it's a seven round invisibility. Please don't troll my player's handbook, buddy. So you guys can head over to, or I don't know, you guys decide what you want to do. I'm going to take a quick minute. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to be playing for a little while yet. I hope you guys. Uh, 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 I, I, yeah, I, I got to go pretty quick, but yeah, it will probably I need to head out in about twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. I got Let's, my happy ass needs to be up in the morning. Yeah, well, you know what? We're set up here. Time. Let's play for a little bit longer. Then I won't go. I had another about an hour and a half, two hours planned, but there is then. Yeah, this is a good spot to kind of pause. Um, <laughs> Well, let's play for a little bit more. Okay, uh, I 20 minutes or so, but I, I do have to be up because I got to go file two pieces of fucking legal paperwork in the morning. No, no, that's good. And I've been going since after work, too, actually. Yeah, and I got to go to work, so. <laughs> okay, and uh, that was a bit of a, a slug fest there, guys, I'll admit. Mm -hmm. But we're set up. We got this stone guardian slug guy. Kapoon is gesturing. Slug fest implies that the other side had a chance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's just be honest. Man, you guys are tough. Tough group. Some of us roll really fucking well. Yeah. We're not as tough as we used to be because, you know, one some... of us is, yeah, one of us is out of spells. That too. Once, yeah, like your magic yeah. missiles have been expelled. I have used one spell today, people, so I'm happy. So you least... leave these unconscious gnomes on the floor. You're like, oh, sorry about your buddies. And you leave a bloody mess. There's corpses strewn about the place. Uh oh. I've got Berg is like <laughs> face first on the marble floor. <laughs> I'm gonna leave three copper pieces next to the, uh, <laughs> to the two no two copper pieces next to him for one copper piece for each gnome I slaughtered. I'll get my thousand gold back. <laughs> oh, your gold is behind the curtain. And in fact, there is another three thousand gold pieces there from the you rich nobleman. Me. Pause button. Is it like keeping track of how much money is over fighting? Three grand. So it's a heavy sack total, uh, of gold. A thousand to him, and I'm taking my thousand back. And this room back here is just—you can see there's a uh, area where they keep like various scrolls, and you pull out some scrolls, and you can see it's like, yeah, star stuff. Another one, <laughs> lovers stuff. Another one, lottery stuff. And it's just like it's amazing scam they had person. going here. It's basically fortune mad lives. Yeah. And there's a there's a really heavy door there that has a an elaborate lock on it you can see already. And you haven't Fine. touched it yet, but Kapuna's kind of eyeballing it. She's come she's walked over to it and she's starting to she's give me a second, give me a second. And she's checking it out, checking it out, checking it out. Hmm. I don't know, it seems okay, but this lock is quite intricate. Let me try this. Unless anyone else wants to do anything. Anyone, anyone else a thief or anything? No. Actually, uh, Brother Merrick has... Uh, he's gonna... He says, let me have a look. And he's like, ah, oh, it seems okay. So she's... Can she pick the lock? She can try. Mm -hmm. Ah, no problem. Click, boom! There's a flash from the door, and she flies backward. She has to make a saving throw, and anybody uh, as well. QP has to make one, and Brother Merrick. I was in there getting my gold, so I imagine I do too. No, it's anyone within that ten foot square. And I just arbitrarily threw characters in there. I didn't even realize it. Brother Merrick's there, QP's there, and Kapuna. Uh, you guys, uh, both Brother Merrick and Kapuna, failed to find the trap. Oh, there was a trap there. Yeah. Good to know. 
Oh, wow. Brother Merrick, being a monk, completely avoids all damage, rolling a crit save. Of awesomeness. And then Kapuna, however, gets electrocuted. Let's see here. Let me have a quick look. Phantom armor. Uh, breath weapon, thief, third level. Sixteen. You guys still have the. Wow, sixteen. Did she make it? It's a sixteen. She had to make sixteen or, or, or greater to make that save. Oh, uh, yeah, I screwed up. Brother Merrick took the full or took half damage. All right. Yeah. And technically, he still got three AC. I got it backward. Have... Yeah, I got it backward. He hasn't taken damage yet. He takes seven points damage. And it's gone. Ow. Oh, I see. Okay. It's gone. Kapuna completely dodges it, and she's like, "Soups, shit!" And she's like, "Brother Merrick, are you okay?" And he's like, "He only smoking. takes like four damage. His hair is all singed off." He's like, "Ah." Oh. You the door opens. Yeah. He's like, "Damn it!" We and yeah, good old traps, one e. Mm -hmm. But there is a hallway that goes south to a spiral staircase that as, uh, ascends up into the tower. So was and, the chest completely destroyed, or did they get it open? No, no, the the door. Oh, the door. Okay. Yeah, it was a door. It was trapped, yeah. and they did Don't open it. The door. She uh, she totally she rolled an eight to pick the locks, but they rolled failed on their fine traps. <laughs> so now, okay, we can stop here, guys, because you're going into the heart of the tower, where mm -hmm. you're gonna have to pass a couple tests, solve a couple riddles, meet the master if he's alive, mm -hmm. and get the last little quest. There's a cool little add on. Um, so I need you guys for one more session. Mm -hmm. right, I'm fine with that, dude. It, yeah. I, I said I normally can I could have probably gone and got some coffee and gone for like an hour or so, but uh mm -hmm. I got like I gotta be up in the morning. I've got to get this shit yeah. filed tomorrow. No, that's okay. We got a that's a, mm -hmm. a three hour well, session, right? Well, well seeing how the police detect the police patrolman who sh or the sheriff's patrolman who showed up last week didn't take a report, so they took an extra almost week to give me the information I needed to file a fucking restraining order. Weird. Eh? I really should go do that tomorrow. <sighs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and everyone, thanks for playing again. And I noticed this session um, was some a bit of a grueling grind in some cases, and mm -hmm. but uh, I had fun. Um, uh, we need to calc experience real fast if we can, Darren. Yeah, you guys didn't triple mm -hmm. up, unfortunately, but you do. You, you killed, <laughs> you killed Den hey, Everybody. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, that's four hundred XP for the ten gnomes. And we got three thousand gold, right? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. That, so that's. Uh, 3, yeah, right 3,000, so 3,400 split between the party. Yeah, and then plus uh, the... Uh, two monks, that's 500 XP, well, 504 to be exact. Mm -hmm. So that's 3,900. And then Lurg is worth, what, 111 XP? That's it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it looks mm -hmm. like we get, hang on a second, we got 40... Oh, the sergeant was worth... Uh, the sergeant was worth a hundred. We got 41. and get control of the stone guardian. That little nugget was a seven hundred and sixty-six XP. Seven hundred sixty-six. That's a, that guy. If he would have fought you, that was a four hit die monster. We're dividing this just three ways, right? Because if right. you guys hadn't have made that wisdom save, that that minus nine, I I made it. I, I didn't expect one of you guys to make that one. I thought, oh, my nice All of us made it is ridiculous. I know. Everyone is like... 1627. Plus, you got the Stone Guardian for another 25 minutes. It's like, clang, clang, clang. Uh, real, real quick. 1627 before the 10%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Seventeen eighty nine. if you get 10%. Yeah. I have 7,841 experience. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. 
I don't know what level I gain or what experience hit. I think thirteen thousands when I get another fighter level. And I realized none of us shared our screen shares. No, I needed to. I forgot to do it again. It's my bad. <clears throat> Damn. Um, so our audience is. No, Remind actually, me. I get eight thousands my next level for cleric, or for fighter. Well, I'm now a fourth level psionicist, but I got a ways to go on mage. Yeah, so mage is six, forever. So sixteen twenty-seven or ten percent. Yeah, it should be seventeen hundred and something. Hang on, sixteen fifty-two, seventeen eighty-nine with your ten percent. Yeah, in next session we should uh, easily conclude the tower and then get the last little uh, prologue. But by the way, guys, I hope you take a look at that fucking doll I sent you a picture of. If you really don't want to sleep tonight, <laughs> that is a creepy fucking doll. If you don't, well, I'd that is a great sleep. big vial of nope. <laughs> well, well, imagine, we, hey, we have a viewer. Oh, really? Hey, really? Hello, hey viewer. <laughs> Whoever's viewing us. Uh, by the way, that <laughs> for the record, I kind of want to buy that doll and put a Teddy Ruxpin thing in the middle of it. <laughs> Only if you put in an old tape of uh, Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Anything Black Sabbath, dude. Nice. Mm. Oh, good job, you guys. I kind of thought that ambush might, they might take a prisoner or something. I was making a contingency plan if that guy escaped and brought in reinforcements. Oh, boy. They yeah, way underestimate our ability to slaughter things. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like all of a sudden, wow, turned it up. Oh, like yeah. he said, though, your spells are in short now, and you got a few wounds. Well, uh, Darren, Darren sorely underestimates our ability to murder hobo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see that. That's a scary pick. Yeah. Anyway, apparently this place loses him because it's the only thanks. thing I well. Oh, right on. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. And and viewer, thanks for watching. I'm not sure who's watching, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we had a bit it's of a viewer. Mask. It, all it matters. It's a viewer. It counts. Yeah. One person watched. We're rich. Hey, anyway, I'll, I'll turn off the broadcast, and uh, I'm going to hang mm -hmm. around for a little bit. And uh, yeah, I got to head off here in just a couple minutes. Huh?